I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a, it's not a request. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Uh, it's a beautiful day to paint. It really, really is. And I'm excited to do that today with my special guest. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by and being here with me. I know there's a lot of excitement going on in the community um, today with Megacon and all that kind of stuff going on. But I appreciate everybody who pops in today and uh, appreciate your support. That being said, of course, yes, please be sure to like and subscribe. Why should you like and subscribe? If you are new here, it's because my name is Dreaming Tabitha and I am an artist. And I've started a stream series that I teach YouTubers how to paint. And it's really, really fun, super exciting. You never quite know exactly what's gonna happen. And uh, I think that's half of the fun. And plus introducing people to new people and uh, just having a fun experience, sharing some wholesome entertainment on a Saturday morning, because it's what I like to do. Uh, just reminds me of the times of when I uh, used to get up early <laughs> and watch cartoons or maybe Bob Ross or Pappy Druitt and things like that um, while eating my cereal. Yes, yes. Favorite cereal, guys. What is it? I'd have to go with probably like Lucky Charms. I did like Fruity Pebbles when I was a little kid, but Lucky Charms. I love marshmallows. They're magically delicious. And Cinnamon Toast Crunch. But anyway, yes, please be sure to like and subscribe and check out my other art videos that I do. I've got all kinds of cool stuff where I've made my own play button. I do oil painting and I do drawing. And you can, of course, always find me on Twitter, Instagram, and on Etsy if you're interested in purchasing things. By the way, Limited time only. Last week, next week is the last week to get limited edition Canadian Bear merchandise. If you know, you know. And if you want one, get one because it's super fun to drink out of. We also have prints and I've got some shirts with a little secret message on the back of the shirts as well. So anyway, yes, let me just say good morning to everybody. How's everyone doing? Maria, so good to see you, and Phil, we've got Just Bald, <laughs> Chef Nick Nero, what a cool name, that's pretty cool, uh, Saturday Morning Cartoons, can we go back, thanks, yeah, exactly, Saturday Morning Cartoons, uh, if you guys have a favorite Saturday Morning Cartoon, what would it be, mine would be Scooby-Doo, um, and pretty much anything, Hanna-Barbera, Snagglepuss, and Quick Draw McGraw, all that good stuff. I mean, of course, who doesn't like the Flintstones? My gosh, they just don't make they just don't make cartoons the way they used to anymore. It's really, really sad. But anyway, oh, also, besides supporting me on Etsy, if you feel inclined, you can also become a Patreon member and uh, just kind of help me out as I try to produce better and more content for you guys. And uh, every now and then, it would be nice to afford like a slushy or maybe a movie ticket or something. <laughs> But no, I appreciate the people that have already supported me on Patreon. Thank you so much. I I just love it. I'm overwhelmed. I'm hashtag blessed in Jesus' name. So that being said, thank you so much again for being here. We've got a wonderful guest on today, if my computer would work. Oh, my gosh. And we're going to go ahead and bring him on. And it is the one and only Justin Proper. Hi, how are you today? This lovely, beautiful morning. I am pretty excited. We were talking a little bit earlier how you said you were both nervous and excited for today's project. Is that yes, true? Is I, that still true? I'm, <laughs> oh, ab oh, absolutely. A couple minutes later. Yeah, not much, not much uh, time has passed since, since those, uh, <laughs> those feelings of self-doubt and also just curiosity of how it'll turn out. Um, yes. Whether it is good or bad, um, it doesn't particularly matter. You put me at ease because... The point is to, you know, share share our passions uh, together. You, I, I, as you've told me, uh, close it on my stream on Thursday. By the way, thank you for coming on. Um, I was kind of surprised that, well, not really that surprised, but uh, you are not a big horror movie fan. I'm not. And I have not been a, a big fan of painting or the fine arts, so <laughs> this is definitely... Uh, just based on experiences in school and nearly failing art class and being embarrassed. Also, I made pipe squares, so that didn't help at all. And the teacher was very frustrated. 
because I had pipe to make yeah, yeah, like there was like a, some pipe project and I didn't make the edges round. I did it with squares, but was going to erase it and make them round. And I just forgot to do that. So maybe that's that's why that's why I uh, I had almost failed because it wasn't <laughs> that it was bad. It was just that I just didn't understand how to listen to instructions in school. Ah, uh, Yes. Well, half of that is, you know, yeah, maybe comprehension, but also the teacher. You know, some people, yes. <clears throat> some people don't have a gift or a knack for um, presenting things, right? They just kind of expect it. Uh, is it me or did the audio just snap? Can everybody uh, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Was it on my end? I'm not sure. Maria says, I can't hear a thing. Excuse me, unlocking the door that she can't hear a thing. Um, anybody else in the chat, do you have an issue with the sound? Because obviously the uh, episode's not quite as interesting if you can't hear what we say. I mean, it's not that it wouldn't be entertaining in some way, but it would be less. Uh, let's see. Phil says, I can hear you guys. Okay. So Yay. we'll let Marie figure that out. Well, Justin, I do hope that I can allay your fears today and yeah, have fun. There shouldn't be, you know, when it comes to painting, we should try not to put too much pressure on people, especially if it's like their, um, their first time and they're not really sure what they need to be doing. I'm squeezing out my paint, by the way, if you hear weird sounds. So, <clears throat> um, it, it should be fun. And I think half of the battle here is that you get to paint something that you enjoy. Like the, the, the subject is something that you enjoy. And that makes a big difference. Um, and as you said, I am not a horror person, horror movie person. So by the way, guys, if you didn't know, this is what we're painting today. Let me get myself Ooh. up here. <clears throat> we are painting Jason from what is this? The Friday the 13th, I'm assuming? Yes. Yes, okay, it is. Yeah, I have no idea about any of this stuff except besides the fact that people die violently. So <laughs> that is an art within itself. Uh, Tom Savini is a very talented uh, makeup violently? artist. <laughs> uh, you, no, no, um, oh. no. It's uh, it's the you know what I mean. It's uh, the special effects. Like even if you're not a fan of uh, what exactly is going on on screen. It's the fact that they're able to make these these sort of things come to life and that Believable. you know that the actors yeah. are just fine and they're laughing, having a good time. Yeah. That's sort of what I what I take away from it. Uh, or I tell people who are not uh, big fans of the uh, the uh, carnage candy, if you will. <laughs> carnage candy. there is candy. stuff to still appreciate. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. I've never heard of I, carnage candy before. Yeah, I, I'm a little sensitive when it comes to gore and and just like fear and uh and like torture and things like that I'm not big a fan you know like war movies and stuff i can handle that it's all good uh you gonna get somebody's head blown off take out a leg sure you know but if you sit somebody down in a chair and start pulling out their fingernails and stuff i can't 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 do that oh <laughs> no 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 um no the the 80s slasher films were just were just a mess and just fun and goofy campy um, it's not like the Saw movies or Hostel where you have those kind of things happen and it just is okay. like, this seems unnecessary. Um, <laughs> e even I had to take a step back and be like, okay, okay. Mm, mm. Right. Uh, Everybody has a little bit. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't like some people, uh, don't really like the ghost movies because, mm. you know, there's a somewhat of a religious aspect to it that just, uh, you know, Hits people in a certain way. I just think they look stupid, and <laughs> it's like a door's opening. Oh, that's so scary! Like no. <laughs> so well, um, I did not do what I said I was going to do, Justin, by giving oh. a small intro to who you are. Good, he's disappearing. We'll just pretend he's not here. Let's just kind of like like start oh, over no, really I'm quickly. The door. Is the fact that, uh, oh, you're talking about the woo-woo. So Justin Proper yeah. is a YouTuber, of course, because that's what I do here. I teach YouTubers how to paint. And uh, he does movie reviews and I think reaction videos. And every now and then he hosts a stream where um, he has other guests such as myself come on and we talk about all kinds of stuff. I'm going to let him tell you more about what he does in the future. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get yeah. started with our art project today. Get the jitters out, have some fun, <clears throat> and right. uh, 
it's going to be great. Let me get my camera situation set up here. Um, Rogue Disney is not here today because he is at Megacon filming and having fun and doing all the stuff with the rest of us kind of wish we could do. So that being oh, said, the I gamers crowd. Yes, I oh, have yeah. over here in my camera. I wish he was here so he could appreciate the fact that I have renamed my camera. Um, because he was picking on me and saying, second cam, really, Tabitha? I would expect as an artist, you could be more creative. And I was just like, <laughs> I just put secondary <laughs> camera on there. So I have my, if anybody wants to tell Rogue that I've changed it to art camera, I'd appreciate it. So he'd stop making fun of me. Anyways. <laughs> slightly more go. creative than second cam. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit. So, of course, I like to go over the equipment, make sure that we're all on the same page. Hey, good morning, Joker Voice. Gosh, I haven't heard you in a hot minute. Um, thank you for joining the chat this morning. He's got, as, as the name suggests there, he has a really great voice and he does the Joker amazingly. <laughs> so, but... Here we go. I'm He's going a to. He's voiceover artist. Okay. So I don't. Uh, to be honest, I don't really know what all he does. I'm just saying that I, when I was on a stream with him, I know that he had that amazing voice, and it was fabulous. But we're gonna have to make sure that we have a handy dandy cup of water and our rag nearby, just in case we make any happy little accidents. And of course, we'll be rinsing our brush throughout. I really hope I don't get that confused with my other cup of water. Yes. So funny story. <laughs> Hang on. Um, that being said here is the fact that when I used to teach uh, adults in an art studio, pretty much the same thing like this, except in person, um, I would often, as the instructor, make sure to let them know that it's wise to put your beverage or your cups of liquid on opposite sides. And remember, so it's like building up muscle memory so that because we, we would they would have like wine night and things like that. And so mm -hmm. it's like I'd have some ladies that would clean their brushes and their wine and they would drink from their paint cups. So I do recommend having those um, having. Oh, OK. Absolutely. So we rearrange this again. Uh, Joker voice says, yes, I'm an inspiring voice artist as well as fellow YouTuber. That's right. That's right. Cool, cool. See, I love this. I love this. Bringing people together, finding new folks, spreading the joy. Mm -hmm. um, so for our painting, we, of course, need our canvas area. And we can see that we're going to be painting vertically, long ways yes. up and down here. I have to make sure I specify. That I do people. know. <laughs> you were able to acquire your stencil, I hope, and get it all cut out. Excellent. There he is. Is that what you meant? Story. Okay. Yeah. I mm -hmm. did as best as I could. I got the fingers right, but all the little yeah. things in between, I uh, did not cut out. That's okay. Because... You can see here, um, like in his little fist area here, I don't really have yeah. all that cut out. I just made little markers of where it's supposed to be, um, even in his okay. fingers here. We're just going to kind of roll with it. We're not going to get too detailed with things. The most that we're spending the detail on is going to be his mask because that's such oh, okay. an essential part of who his character is. So the rest of it, yeah. we're just going to kind of leave to the imagination as long as the basics are there. So then okay. we have our brushes. We talked about those earlier, just showing everybody our equipment that we're using for today, using a one inch half brush, flat brush, excuse me, a one inch half brush. <laughs> that's math yeah. for you. This is why I'm an artist. So a one inch brush, flat brush, and a half inch flat brush and two detail brushes here. Okay. Uh, Phil says that Rogue Disney is very happy about your second camera name change. <laughs> Did somebody tell him? Did you tell him, Phil? <laughs> and then for our paints, here we go. Using my really fancy, hang on, I need to adjust my secondary camera here. Excuse me, my art cam. It has tilted a little bit, removing some of the canvas. Here we go. So let me bring that a little closer here. Over this side, we have brown and black, blue, green, white, and red. You'll notice how much of each color I have. And I would recommend that you go ahead, especially with the black, well, with these colors here, the black and white, the blue and the green, go ahead and have those on your palette. Yeah. Because we're going to be doing a lot of blending today. I know it's a lot of information to start with. Um, we just got to get out of the way before we, we really have the fun. But yeah, go ahead and put the black, the blue, the green, and the white out. Um, okay. We can always do the brown and the red later on. 
and pretty generous sized amounts here. I believe you're working, is it on an eight by 10 canvas? Um, yes. Okay, <clears throat> excellent. So it's gonna be quite a, my canvas more is just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You'll be fine, you'll be great. <laughs> well, thank you. The great Already thing about- You're not good. Well, All the right. great thing about acrylic paint is the fact that it dries quickly and you can layer it. So it's instead of like being able to erase something, you can erase it by just covering it. So it's going to be all good. Okay. So I already got, uh, is cobalt blue okay? Or is a darker blue better? Um, a brighter blue would be good as some like, uh, uh, hang on. Can you show me? I don't, everybody has like different names. Let me see what oh, you okay. have. I will just show you all of the blue that I have. You have um, a blue that kind of looks like this? Ultra yeah, there marine. you go. Okay. That looks good. Yeah, that one's oh, easy. <laughs> okay. All right. So. I'm so glad I'm not getting graded on this. No, absolutely not. But your reputation on the internet will be there. So, you know, it's all good. Oh, um, okay. Because <laughs> the internet well, is forever. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, all right. So far, right. so good. So what we're all doing, right. we bring back my original painting. And uh, I'm going to show you some brush etiquette and techniques that we're going to be using for painting today. So let me get a little bit more blank space that we can see. So we're going to be starting off with our one inch flat brush here. And okay. instead of doing brush strokes, normally when we use brushes like this, a lot of times people just drag it across, yeah. right? And they just go up and down and things like so, which is nice. However, what we're doing today is to create this pattern here, this illusion of texture, like, mm -hmm. um, fog and foliage down here. So we're getting two for one, if you will. And so okay. it really helps with the illusion of the picture, creates some ambiance here, a little bit scary because it looks again like fog. You know, the way they do that in the movies, that bright light behind the scary character. So that's what we're going yeah. for here. With this brush, what we're going to do is okay. that we're going to be dabbing. Let me see if I can get the right angle here. Dabbing like this. We're going to be pushing upwards with the brush like so. Okay. okay. And going like this. The reason being is so that, of course, it leaves behind this pattern, but you'll notice that I've got all these little wispy areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's thicker areas of paint and then there's much thinner areas of paint. So that's what gets this like fluffy effect. So when we do the, the dabbing, we'll do this mm -hmm. and always make sure that it is at this angle. So that way you take care of the bristles, right? We don't want to accidentally have some of the bristles going downwards. Whoops over here downwards like that okay it, so it, 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 yeah it damages the brush so mm -hmm. um don't go so against the grain yeah yeah you yeah. want to just kind of like you know like dab like so all the bristles going in the same direction play some acdc justin might help with the painting you know <clears throat> it's true a lot of artists play specific kind of music but uh, so that's what we're going to be doing first that's just the first move is just remember to do this essentially we're going to be doing this okay. quite a bit so just doing the quick walkthrough before we put paint to canvas. We're going to start with our brightest area because it's, you can always get darker, very difficult to get brighter. And we're going to have green, basically very pale green. It's almost non-existent here. There's actually quite a bit of color in here, but it doesn't look like it it's because everything else okay. is darker. <clears throat> but we're going to be going from white into green, from right. green into blue, and then blue into black. Okay. Okay. Uh, would this viridian color be okay? Or is that? Yes. That's a beautiful uh, green. Yes. <clears throat> One of okay. my favorites. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, yeah. If the other thing too, is that if your painting doesn't turn out exactly like mine, it's totally fine because everybody oh, has wow. their own experiences, their own techniques, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, all of that makes a difference in your painting. But my painting is not even going to look exactly like my painting because it's really impossible to recreate everything here we're just going to follow a guideline trust the process and enjoy it as well so let me move jason over here <clears throat> and uh, what we are going to do is take our stencil i may have accidentally misled you before when i said oh no we don't need our stencil till way later <clears throat> i kind of forgot that we're going to use him here in the beginning as just a, an, a helper right so if we have a pencil or a pen we're not going to do his entire body because that would be a waste of time. But what yes. we're going to do is set him off to the side here. And just mm -hmm. to help us know how much brightness and what area to work in, I'm going to set him right here. He looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to make a marker at the top of his head like this. 
and at the okay. bottom of the foot, like this. We can okay. see the <clears throat> two little markers there. All right. Let me try to adjust this camera again. It keeps shifting. I think I need a different arm. <laughs> Let's see. It's a little bit better. We'll just have to go across this. But yeah, just kind of like so, and just a little marker on the top, a little marker on the bottom. This is kind of cool because he's kind of like standing up right now on the on the easel. So <laughs> I'd like the bottom. It's just the bottom. So that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he doesn't have to be all the way on the bottom. Um, if you'll know, I mean, it's up to you. You can place this wherever you think it would look best. You'll notice here that I don't have them all the way on the bottom. Um, I don't have them all the way on the bottom here. That's up to you. Okay. If you would like to have them lower, you can. Try to trust your own judgment when it comes to composition. Uh, fancy he term here good. that just means the placement of our item. And okay. uh, he can be lower down. That's totally fine. I like to encourage people to have creative liberty because, again, this is your painting. I want you to be happy with it. I'm going to move uh, yeah. our killer. Should I make a, a little mark where the machete is? No. Oh, whoops. I mean, you, you can't. No, no, it's not a problem. You can if you want to. <clears throat> if you think that will help you, you don't have to. It's totally fine. Okay. I guess I'm just eyeballing it here, but if that would make you more comfortable, then please do. So, okay. Here we go. Now it's time to start the fun. I'm going to take our okay. brush. We're not dipping it in water unless your brushes, your brushes are brand new. Are they very yeah. stiff where they've been glued together? No, it's very soft. Excellent. So then don't worry about getting them wet. Sometimes paint, uh, the paint brushes have like a glue casing around it to keep the, the bristles from flaring everywhere. And so you have to oh, yeah. wet them in order to do that. But we're not more focused on that. So I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and I'm going to come at my paint from the side. We're starting with white and just go okay. ahead and do a little bit of a backstroke here into the white okay. and then flip it over and do the other side. Get a pretty generous amount of paint here. All right. Okay. And you're not going to be, this is the best part of the painting for people who might be nervous because the first stroke is always the hardest because you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. So <laughs> you can't see it. So it's going to be okay. But I'm going to go over here where my marker is, right? I've got the top yeah. portion. Here. And all I'm going to do is just pat my surface area like so. Just kind of splash oh, okay. it on. So yeah, you can't see it. Probably maybe yeah. you might be able to see a little bit of the shadow here, but we're just putting that. Get familiar with what it feels like to do this motion. And just kind of go in a circle. And we're just gonna put quite a bit of white. I'm going back for seconds. Um, in this oh. area here where Jason's body is. Okay, before we want to make sure that the th the paint is actually pretty thick. Normally, um we would want to have nice smooth application of paint, but this time we want it to be pretty blotchy because acrylic paint does dry pretty quickly. And we're going to do a yeah, quite there's a bit big of chunks of paint here. Okay. Well, we don't necessarily want mountains, but maybe just some blotches, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. They're just little Hills. Yeah. There you go. I've got some little Hills too. You probably can see them on camera. Um, uh, by the way, Phil says, bet you'll do great, Justin. Thank you, Phil. Oh, That's well, right. thank you. Be your hype man for the day. So just kind <laughs> of make a big fluffy white cloud all the way from the top to the bottom of where Jason would be. And this is the best kind of background really to do because there's no wrong way to do this. There are good and better ways to do things. But for a background that's just supposed to emphasize... Um, his villainy and mm -hmm. creates tension. There's no wrong way to do this. It's just learning about where to place the color, how much paint to use, and just getting better at technique. That's all. Okay. So yeah, so so far so good, I'm sure. Yes. We're just putting <laughs> white paint and this like giant weird cocoon thing. Mm-hmm. A pretty big area here that basically, if you imagine his body would be, it kind of covers all of his body and then some. Yeah, I got the outline pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and show you on my camera. Like, I'll basically use my brush to kind of show you. This is how much space that I've take, taken up on my canvas here. Yeah. 
So the reason that I've gotten quite a bit of white going on here is because of the fact that as soon as you start adding darker colors, um, they try to engulf everything else. So we want to make sure we have a generous amount of white to balance out um, the colors that we're about to add here. So it doesn't take over because we want to make sure we have a really nice bright spot to really enhance Jason. And then we get darker at the edges to um, help contrast all of that. So, okay. So um, while you're still fluffing and doing the next thing that we're going to do is leave. We're not going to be rinsing our brush for the entirety of the background. So don't worry about that. Let all these colors merge and do their thing. I'm going to reapply some more paint, the white to one corner of my brush, like so. Just one corner? Mm -hmm, just one corner, since there's already a bunch of white in there. And then I'm going to dip the other corner into just a little bit of green. So you'll the notice green? that it's, mm -hmm. you'll notice that it's more white than it is green. Yes. And starting at the top over here and over to the side, I'm gonna make sure that when I start patting out that the green is towards the edge, right? So it's basically yeah. white on white. And all we're gonna do is do a couple of little blotches like this. And we'll notice, of course, that this is not blended. So we really wanna soften this green. So the more we pat, I'm gonna do it pretty briskly here and let all that white mix with the green. And we're basically just going to start creating like a kind of a mint color and just let it go back and forth in the one spot over and over. We're not gonna uh, carry on to the rest of the cloud <laughs> until we're getting a very soft grain and we kind of understand what it is that we're making. So you'll Probably notice here- the white a little bit larger. That's okay, you can always add more white. Yeah. It's all good. And you'll see here that now I have this nice fade basically from the green into the white where it almost like disappears very soft, the sage kind of color. Doesn't have to be a perfect blend, but um, it is kind of nice to, again, help create that feel like it's going from brightness to darkness, like he's going into the trees or something. And we're just gonna be blotching all around the white. It doesn't have to be a perfect um, shape. It can be kind of mismatched. And yeah, it's kind of like the shape of his body and there is a lot of green. Okay, well, if you have too much green, what you don't wanna do is rinse your brush out. You wanna actually take your towel and just pat out the excess green on your towel and then go back with whatever white's on there. Let me just get some more mm -hmm. and just fluff it down. There will still be some green in there and that's okay, but the white is going to lighten it significantly. Oh, okay. And it's okay if there is a little bit of pale, pale green here in the middle. That's why we put on so much white. So that way, whatever green touches, it's really going to be very pale. Okay. Just going around. So is there anybody in the chat that is also into these, what did you call it? Carnage candy? Is that what it's called? Is that what oh, the, the movies the slasher are called? Films. Yeah, slasher, slasher films. films. Yes. I'm curious to see if anybody else is a fan of these kinds of movies. Um, and if you are, what kind? I know we just recently had, was it Friday the 13th here in real life? So Yes. Yeah. Fun day. <laughs> Is Fun there, day a, the does, do people kind of celebrate that? Do they do something special for that? Or is it just kind of like a recognition thing? Um, well, Friday the 13th has been long, has been, you know, kind of established longer than the, the movies have for bad luck or some, in some cultures, lucky 13 for those weirdos. But uh, <laughs> uh, everyone knows that, that in middle school, no, no one is necessarily lucky. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, mostly people just will do marathons or they'll watch like some ranking videos of the movies um, or something like that. Just sort of a, and kind of decide for themselves because not all of those movies are created equal. Um, they, some of them are worse than others. <laughs> so, um, the one that, that people, people tend to like the most is the final chapter, which features people such as like stars who were, uh, like, but like right before they were famous, like Kevin Bacon was in the first one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have a pretty, 
spoiler alert, I don't know if you're ever gonna watch those films, but he is a probably he's a very, he's a, has a very cool death scene. Okay. Um so and, and we know that Kevin Bacon is alive as of recording this stream, so it's all good. <laughs> um right. Right. Crispin Glover of from the you know George McFly from Back to the Future. Ah. Um, uh, Corey Feldman was in that as well, just right before the Goonies came out. And so seeing them on screen kind of uh, getting into their element is just another level of fascination. Um, okay. Yeah, because their performances are really good. Um, so, but it's for a variety of reasons. Some people enjoy like they enjoy different aspects of it. Um, not, it, but the that series in particular is not exactly great for its story. Um, no one, no one oh. watches it for the story. Okay, what do they yeah. watch it for then? Um, just just the fact that it's just mindless entertainment. Okay, easy watching. Like, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, uh, well, Phil some says of that he likes movies. watching people's reactions to scary movies. Oh yeah, that's definitely uh, an element uh, of that as well. Um, that could also this could also be a good a good reason. Um, but yeah, it, it it just all depends on on the person, you know. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I I'm too sensitive, too sensitive to it, like jump scares and things like that. I just I don't mind a good thriller. But I can't handle like gore. It's just not my thing. It's not for me. There are oh, some yeah. elements where I've seen trailers for scary movies and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. But I just know myself that I'm not going to be able to handle it. Um, quick pause here. You'll notice that um, this is not quite as nice a blend here that I have on the bottom. There's too much green okay. for me personally here. So I'm just going to, I used up what was in my brush as far as the green. And I'm going to go back with the white and just kind of pat over it, which it's still going to be green. But I'm just going to lighten okay. it a little bit and just kind of have fun with it. You'll notice that a lot of the pure white has disappeared at this point. It's totally fine. Yeah. Oh, Is yeah. Do you, do you want to do you want to see how mine is so far? It's nothing sure. like it at all. Okay. okay. So far, that's kind of the background. So it's oh, much it more. Good. Yeah, it's much more of a foresty green and uh, or mm -hmm. like a, a lighter green. Um a little dark on the outside. Um, well, that's yeah, fine because very we're very big. Gonna... <laughs> he, it's a very big stencil for the eight by ten. So. Well, and that's okay. I think, especially if this is, um, you know, one of the first times you've painted it in a while, this dabbing motion is going to get old very quick. By the way, I'm just let you know because it's, we're do literally doing this to fill the entire background, and so it's going to definitely help develop the muscles in the hands, the wrist, and the forearm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you just kind of make your way around it. It doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, mine just kind of looks like a big blotch here at the moment too. So that's totally fine. And um, when we have pretty much the whole thing kind of rimmed in a very light green, whether you can see on the edge, there's a little bit of dark green. I'm just going to get a little bit more white, just a little bit. Not a lot. You can see here I've just gotten a little bit because there's there's still white in my brush, you know, and I'm going to flip it over and get more green on the other side and start back. What I'm just going to kind of designate as home base. I'm just always going to start back at this little corner here and uh, it puts down some green or excuse me, some white. But then I'm going to put down some more green and do this motion. And we're basically just going to get darker. Kind of like what you've already done um, around the edge like so. So it's going to get a little bit more sinister, a little bit more interesting because we have all this variety of green going on. And uh, again, kind of give this like fog or this like foresty feel. Um, and we're just going to carry all the way around. Again, it doesn't need to be a perfect shape. Feel free to kind of make it wonky looking. Trust your instincts here. It's okay. There's no wrong way as long as we have a nice bright center over here. Because if you wanted to, you can always take your stencil and kind of try to remember where, you know, your thing was, your markers, and just kind of hold them here. And it's like, okay, that works. I can still see his helmet. I can still see his arms, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we can always readjust him in the center as needed. Um, but it's going to be good. He's going to really stand out. So it's all good. Now, you being a uh, person that really likes these, these horror and slasher films and things like that, what makes a good slasher film? Like, for somebody um, like me... 
who's just like, they're all the same. Um, I'm sure they're not. So <laughs> what, what makes for a good, good movie? Well, it's not necessarily just slasher films. It's uh, what I kind of categorize it as just a good film. Like, uh, okay. It's something that uh, that is great for for the genre. Don't remember my, where my white is. Oh, right there. <laughs> um, it's kind of like a, like I'm not very into sports movies, but I can appreciate right. Rocky because it's it, it's good storytelling. Right. Um, and uh, like people will take Halloween, for example, as uh, one of one of the greatest uh, horror movies uh, of mm -hmm. all time, especially for that subgenre. Um, it, it's just the, the filmmaking aspect, um, the intensity, the fact that there isn't that much gore. It relies more on uh, oh. emotional scares um, okay. as opposed to just jump scares. Um, and with also, also a great actress like Jamie Lee Curtis definitely mm -hmm. helps uh, sell the movie. You feel for the character, their fear, and they're going through their, the fears sometimes in your head or you know you're in this the safety of a movie theater um yeah. or your own home um assuming it's a safe place uh right. <laughs> and, right. and so you can kind of dabble into the fear without just being full-on just traumatized for life um so there's okay. something there's some sort of element of just danger that people find exciting about right. it right because they're it's kind of outside their comfort zone too nobody Nobody exactly enjoys being chased around with a guy with a machete. Um, yeah, I would say so. If you are, you might have some issues you need to work through, you know. <laughs> you might want to move. That, you might want to move. Or, uh, you know, file a restraining order. See you, Phil. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, Phil. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, I'm sure so he will be on to see what your final result is later. But yeah, okay. So that's interesting about that. That not yeah, they're not all the same. Uh, they do have an element of creativity in there because it's not just killing people. The psychological aspect, I guess, like you were saying, emotional, yes, yes, psychological, that is a big aspect. And some people, um, some people just enjoy like, oh, uh, oh, let's see what kind of uh, interesting things that Tom Savini can do. It's like those zombie movies that are just absolutely just gross. Uh, <laughs> you know yeah, I, I, I mean, can't do zombies can't do them. i don't i don't like zombies i think they're slow and boring um uh, I, I just can't handle the group I, I don't handle people eating people very well so <laughs> i can't do it yeah yeah it's but at least you know it's a movie um i know but i have a very vivid imagination so like it just all of a sudden i'll be in a, in a dark place in the house or something like that and all of a sudden like my mind just kind of remembers a horrible situation like i one time watched the walking dead with my brother and oh, no. i was like and I was like, oh, this is interesting. This show looks really cool, you know? And uh, I, I do like the story aspect of the show, but there was this one scene, and oh my gosh, I'm, I've had literal nightmares, <laughs> daymares too, of they were in the woods, of course, and they thought they were safe, and then all of a sudden, of course, they weren't. Zombies came out of nowhere and um, attacked the trailer, and they started running, and one girl fell and the zombie jumped on her back and started like tearing her clothes. And, and you saw him bite into her flesh and her spine and you could see the skin tear. And that, that just did it for me. Like I was literally haunted in my thoughts by that scene. I'm just too sensitive for that stuff. And I'm like, that sucks. Cause this show looked really interesting. Um, again, I don't mind a good thrill aspect, but I, I can't handle human mutilation in such a way. So I just, I know oh, myself, okay. like, you know, it's I'm just not can't yeah, it's not for everybody, uh, it's, for sure. It's certainly not. <laughs> but but I, um, I, like you said, I can appreciate the work, the, the thought that goes into it. The, my goodness, the details of the flesh and everything, the prosthetics, like, oh, yeah, kudos to the makeup artists and everything. Oh, yeah. Um, what helps me, the ones that I enjoy the most, um, those kind of scary movies, um, is when they have a good... Uh, a good, uh, um, not self-deprecation, but self-awareness, and also, um, you know, it has humor in it. That's that's what I enjoy because yeah. I, I enjoy comedies. Oh yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you do as well. Oh yeah. So, so um, I mean, one of the 
one of the ones that I always go to is Scream. Scream is uh, is more, for me more of a comedy than it is a horror movie, even though it is quite terrifying. Um, it's uh, it it helps kind of eases the blows when uh, when all the scary stuff happens. So all I think about sometimes uh, when I come away from that movie is one, I love the characters. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. And two, Matthew Lillard is fantastic and should be protected at all costs. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Joker's the voice that. says for, for one, those zombies, quote unquote, are not zombies. They are ghouls. A zombie is a magically reanimated re corpse. Ghouls are undead flesh eaters. Interesting. I guess if you wanted to get into the nitty gritty of it all. Yeah. You know, I can see that. Um, it's interesting. I never thought about it or heard of it that way. Hey, TD, good morning. And Toll Assassin, hello, and says, hey, TD, as well. If you know horror rules, you'll survive Scream. What does that mean? <laughs> there are certain rules in, or in order for one to successfully survive a horror movie. Number one, you can never pork. Just a uh, big no-no. Uh, number two, you cannot drink or do drugs. It's a sin factor, an extension of number one. Okay. And number three, never, ever, ever under any circumstances <laughs> say, I'll be right back. Because you, oh. you won't be back. Do you mean the like watching points. the movie or being <laughs> or being in the movie? <laughs> oh, no, no. The the whole idea of Scream is that they're they're in a horror movie. Oh, and okay. they recognize that. So they try to observe the rules of the horror movie. That's that's where the, the satire and self-awareness comes in. <laughs> Soul Assassin says, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ja uh, yeah. <clears throat> and then Jamie Kennedy laid out the rules of horror film survival. That is actually, I think, really cool in the fact that in this genre of film that there are some things that for a better experience or whatever, like there's rules. I think that's kind of cool. Um, oh, yeah. They're, they're more like tropes and cliches. But yeah, um, like, uh, you know, there's all like uh, there, there's always always these different stereotypes of people like uh, Cabin in the Woods is a good example. You have a uh, Chris Hemsworth uh, is in the film. He played he's like a. I don't know, but he's in college. He plays a third three dimensional character. They all do. But when they step into this weird area that the government kind of takes over this wooded area and they create a horror movie scenario for all the, all these five people to be a part of. And what happens is they basically just use some <laughs> weird gas and turn them into stereotypes. Okay. So Chris Hemsworth becomes like a, a jock out of nowhere, but that's not who they are because that's <laughs> yeah. not how real people work. Right. So, yeah. And then you have the stoner, the, uh, I don't know what the other one is like a bass. I don't think of the breakfast club, except if they were in a horror movie. Uh, given that I've never seen the breakfast club. I know. What? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> how? I, I don't know. It just never came up on the radar, but I've heard about it for sure. Um, really quickly to pause here. You'll see again that I don't have a perfect shape. I wanted to make sure I kind of showed that to you and that I am dark around the edges. I have decided to get a little darker just on or stay a little darker on this side and just let the white kind of merge in over here. Um, I don't know how much space you have filled up, what it's looking like. Um, carry on with, um, with the green if you need to. This is what it looks to. like. Oh, hang on one second. One second. Ooh, that looks good. It kind of has like this, yeah, this jungle thing. Almost like you're creating this arbor. It's mm -hmm. nice. That's going to be great when he um, stands there. So uh, next, I'm just going to go straight into my green here. Do a little bit darker because we're about to add some of the blue. So I'm basically going to pick spaces where I want the darkness, the darker green here. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of sticking with one-sided over here. And I'm just going to dab and fill try to blend it a little bit if i need to put some white in there i can but just keeping it dark over on this side fill it up a little bit and then um like i said in a little bit we're going to be adding adding some blue 
It won't take too long. This is just like basically some touch-ups. Where do you think it might be uh, best to have it a little bit darker? Go ahead and again, try to trust your instincts. Take a look at it and be like, okay, I like this. I don't like that. Maybe there should be a little bit of white here and there, which is what I'm doing. Just kind of gently pushing some, some white into the green. Okay. Don't overthink it. You know, it's all going to come together. But just again, just before we move on to the next color, just kind of play around and see. see I realized that I did create mountains with the white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they take just a little bit longer to dry, but it'll be okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So it doesn't matter if they're like, I don't know, big globs. Need yeah, to you can always you can always take your finger and smooth them over. And it's Rogue Disney stuck in traffic, so I can pop in and say yes to Art Cam. Hi, Rogue Disney. <laughs> yes, I did. I thought about you when I was labeling and getting my camera ready, and I'm like, I better change that because if he pops in today, he's gonna give me some grief about it. Sorry that you're stuck in traffic, but at the same time, you're going to MegaCon. I think I guess this morning. I don't know. I assume. So you know. Yeah. So you're, you're, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of some of the rest of us that were interested in going. So <laughs> you'll be, you'll be all right. Hope you that you have a, photo? um, I think so. Since there's people there that I kind of know, I don't really like going places where I, where I don't like new experiences by myself. Oh I mean, yeah. Nervous. You want to experience it with somebody else. So, yeah. So given the fact there, there are some people that I have, that I know and have met before, um, that would have been really cool, but you know, at the same time, it's just like, uh, <laughs> and money, you know, not all, not all of us are, you know, successful, uh, profitable <laughs> YouTubers. YouTubers. Yeah. <laughs> we'll it's see, okay. But... Uh, if it makes you feel any better, um, I, I made it work with Star Wars Celebration in Chicago. Oh. Um, that was a lot of fun. Now the group was a lot, a lot smaller back then. It was a lot more intimate, and I appreciated that. But I got to meet pretty much everybody, Josiah, Anna, Jesse Milestone, Jeff Hicks, uh, Ethan oh. Van Skyver was also Look there. your name dropping there. over there. I'm hanging out with a big wig. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, Jeremy was there. Odin was there. Just everybody who was uh, early on um, a part of that, or that little circle. Um, okay. So... But yeah, a lot smaller crowd. Like I think, uh, I think they only had everyone only had over a hundred thousand subscribers. So only. Well, compared to now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like where it's like triple that. God, oh, Rogue's out here telling us he's like, I already spent one grand. Well, Rogue, just be off with your bad stuff then. <laughs> I did catch some of your uh, Instagram stuff. Uh, where you were kind of walking around. And I appreciate that, Rogue. I appreciate you sharing the experience with the people that um, would like to have gone and could not. That's that's really special. Um, yeah, some I people said they're lurking. Celebration. Yeah, I think that's, that's really nice. You know, that is the great thing about the internet is that we can, um, you know, experience the world in a different way, even though we w might want to actually be there in person. Some of us can't. And uh, Joker's voice says, Drunk 3PO and Gina are already at the Megacon. I don't doubt. I mean, there was a lot of hype about her coming. And so if she wasn't there, a lot of people would be sad. And a lot of people would be happy. You know, so you've got both <laughs> sides of the schism. Um, I am going to go ahead. I've already got a huge bunch of white on my hand that I'm not sure how it got there. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked down and I'm like, it's where did that come from? And you what probably just put your hand in it because uh, you have big piles of that paint, like big p little puddles there. It's probably because you were sliding it across. And I no, forgot the word I didn't even it. feel it. Like paint's cold. Anyway, I'm going to put <laughs> green. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't even know where that came from. Such is the life that I'm going to be quiet because it's your channel. <laughs> Thank you. That's just the life I lead. Seriously, though, small little moment here is the fact that um, I one time, you know, I well, so I paint all the time. And of course, I tried to s clean myself up. I even took a shower. And the next day I went to church and somebody pointed something out on my elbow. And I had like all these little green stripes on my elbow from paint. And I'm like, I took a shower. I cleaned. What is wrong with me? How did that even get there? I don't use my elbows to paint. 
So, and Joker's voice, exactly, because some painters are just sloppy. I, excuse you, sir. No, Whoa. No, it's, true. it's true. It's true. That it just gets everywhere. You can't really help it. So that's why, that's why I'm wearing old clothes today. Cause you know, and he says, I just realized that dreaming Tabitha is left-handed. That's often lefties are the best people. We thank you. That makes up for your previous comment. <laughs> we are, we are special people for sure. So what I was going to say is that I'm going to leave all this color in here and we're going to go move on to blue. I'm going to do the two toning process that we had already done where we put okay. one color on one side and one on the other. So I'm going to re-dip into my white, excuse me, re-dip into my green, flip it over and dip into my blue. This is where the fun's going to start happening here. And uh, always starting over towards home base, just to be consistent, because I also want this to be the darkest portion, making sure green touches green. I'm just going to start dabbing like so. And of course, we can see that it's not blended, just like the first time we applied the white and the green. But as we go around and just kind of dab and start merging the blue into the green. It's going to create some really cool colors and just create what we call, um, although it's got some white in it, it would kind of be considered phalo green or phalo blue. It just depends on how much of each color you have. My favorite colors, because my favorite colors are green and blue. So the fact that they merge them together and make the perfect color, it's my jam. And then we're just going to continue going around and around until we fill up the surface area. Um, we want to make sure that we use quite a bit of color here and start slowly integrating more and more blue as we come around uh, because we're almost done with filling our background and then we will be adding black to it. And with black, you got to be super careful because of the fact that it is a non-color, just like white. Technically, they're not colors. They're the absence of color. So black especially will try to consume whatever colors you do have in here. And we've worked really hard on our background, so we okay, don't want to lose them. Uh, used uh, any of the cup of water. Good yeah. Sun. Okay. Yeah. I have no. wiped up a lot of the white. So do I need to reapply <laughs> that? You've wiped up the white and you want to reapply. I'm trying to understand what that means. Yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, a lot of it is kind of wiped off. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean... You can, I mean, if does your painting still look good? Are you happy with how it's progressing? At for a first time, not bad. Not bad, right? It's just, it's just colors. It's just blotchy colors. Yeah. So yeah, carry on. Oh wait, you wanted to show us? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, it's just how it is so far. Oh, the blue is very good. blue. Right. Well, and so when the blue is very blue, what you'll want to do here? Oh my goodness, I almost spilled my coffee, <gasps> guys. Oh no, it's happening. It's starting to happen. Okay. What? <laughs> I've got paint everywhere. I'm spilling coffee. We're having a good time. Good morning, Matuine. Oh. Hello. Oh, what a cute little Jawa. That's cute. Uh, so if you have, I'm just going to go ahead and just put a big blotch of blue up here that's not blending with my green very well. So if there's too much blue, I will pat out the excess on my towel. Like, just wipe it off, not clean it. And I'll go in with some green and even a little bit of white to kind of help balance it out and just keep dabbing and going back and forth and spreading out that color like so like just i realize my white is turning a little green <laughs> <laughs> it is not as pure white as it used to be no it's okay i mean i don't have any sections in here that are pure white it looks like it because the light's making it bright but um there's no more pure green in my painting either or excuse me pure white in my green, in my oh, green. was I supposed to do that like inside of the Jason bubble? You could have if you wanted to, you didn't have to because you put down the white, so it's all good. Okay, good I gotta morning, be careful because I'm almost out of white, <laughs> yes. And we need that for Jason's mask, so we won't really need okay. much more white except for his mask and the sword, or excuse me, the machete. Um. TD said, just saw Jay's newest IG post, him and Gina in a golf on a golf court. I don't doubt that they're having a blast. Uh, Joker's voice says, I don't believe in coffee. I live in Las Vegas. Coffee needs a shot, a shot Bailey's and Jameson to be acceptable. Okay. Is that is that the rules in Vegas? I used to live in Vegas, but I was a child, so I, I didn't drink coffee. Or alcohol, I hope. Uh, you know. Be like, I'll be like Tim Possible. I can neither confirm nor deny. I'm just kidding. I don't drink. <laughs> That's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
as messy as I am when I'm sober. My goodness. Oh, oh, you've had interesting experiences, I presume. <laughs> you don't have to go into detail. You can plead the fifth. My human, my human existence is just kind of messy. Like, Jesus, take the wheel. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. There was an article we read on uh, on my channel uh, where somebody literally said, with their with their child uh, in the back seat, they said they got into an accident. And they said, I just said, I let Jesus take the wheel, literally. <laughs> Okay. I'm like, no, no. That's not how that works. Yeah, no. No, he he doesn't literally take the... No, right. It's a saying. It's not a method to live by in the real world. <laughs> Some people just dumb. Exactly. Bless their that's heart. Not... Yes. <laughs> and I that's live in this house. I, I have to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's true, though, because it... You know, some people are just, you know, should never have kids because <laughs> it's just, oh you know, it's one of those things where it does make you feel better, though, that even though you've screwed up, you're not as bad as these people. <laughs> True. <laughs> Jesus never drove a car. I would never let Jesus take the wheel of any vehicle. That's awesome. <laughs> it's true. That is, that is very true. That is very true. They could have had cars. Who knows? No experience whatsoever. So why would he doesn't even have a driver's license? So that would be illegal. And Jesus doesn't work like that. So <laughs> that's no, great. I love that train of thought. Oh my gosh, I got to share that with some people. That's funny. Church humor, guys. I'm sorry. It's kind of like dad <laughs> jokes. It's its own little genre. So I'm glad you found a church that is very accepting. Um, the one I was at when I was younger, I was confirmed in the Catholic Church. Fun fact: okay. did not last very long because uh, you know they they uh, they passed around the donation basket a little too quickly. Oh, for my life. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was just one of those things that left a bad taste in my mouth. It so. can absolutely if it's not done biblically, if it's not done the right way, it can be very. Uh, it can be very it put put you off very easily. No, no doubt. I mean, I think anybody who's ever stepped into a church, no matter what denomination, has can say that there's some kind of a bad taste because people, people are people, and um, sometimes those people are in leadership and they are not doing what God wants them to do, and they take advantage of other people. And the important thing. For my experience is to you know not take it not take <laughs> not take out how stupid people are on on god because he didn't like he would never want them want people to to do stupid things and to do wrong and hurtful things but when people paint christ and god like that that's when it's really really wrong um and that's oh, why okay. it, that's why it's misleading to people that's why they want nothing to do with the church because the church stepped out of bounds and under the guise of God said, oh, you must do this. And people, because it's religion and religion has such a big hold on many cultures in our life that we just to say, oh, well, we have to do this. And then we start understanding and thinking that God is a certain way when he absolutely is not, you know. Um, Joker says, like I said, I got no problem with God. It's his fan club I have issues with. Yeah. And, you know, there has to be a certain uh, level of grace extended to people because some people are just jerks and idiots and you just do what you're supposed to do for God and let God take care of those fools because it's the only person that can fix them. <laughs> um, yeah. I can have quite a bit of blue going on here. I'm liking this. I'm just going to quickly pull out my original painting and throw it over here. You'll notice that it's not, a, I mean, we still haven't gotten the black on here. But um, you'll notice that it's still a little bit different from what I'm doing right now. But it's okay because, again, if I bring back my stencil and hold him right here, it's not quite as intimidating at the moment because we don't have any black. But it's looking good. I can clearly see his outline and um, all that good stuff. So um, I'm going to continue with a little bit more blue, filling up these spaces before I start integrating um, the black. And... Uh, because I don't want to take too much time on our background, but I know that our, I knew that our background would take a long time because of the fact that we're uh, doing a lot of dabbing action here. Uh, the great thing is, too, Justin, if your wrist is getting tired from this, because, like I said, it's it's kind of a musk uh, 
an exercise for the muscles. If you're not accustomed to this, it can get kind of achy. Uh, you can feel free to switch hands because we're just literally dabbing and dabbing and there's no precision necessary for this. So, okay. Uh, you know. Well, I, I play guitar, so I'm kind of used to this kind of motion. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Same Hence here. The, uh, you can't actually, you can't see it back here, but uh, right behind Harrison Ford, there is a Gibson SG. Just sit, just nice there. Gibson. Mm -hmm. I have a Yamaha that I got when I was 11, and I still play. That's what I use. <laughs> That's what I well, use. What you, you know got. what? Does it still have its strings attached? Yes, but I did. I did get new strings since since then. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. I I would hope so. After after like 15 years, yeah, you would probably get new strings. It has been six years since I've gotten new strings, so it is due for for that. Yeah, it's um, probably been like three years since I've gotten new strings. So, so you've been playing since you were eleven, just kind of on and off. Yeah, I taught myself how to play, and then I, and a couple of people um, that I went to church with when I was living in Virginia, they were professional musicians, and uh, they would give me some tips and tricks and help me out and encourage me along the way. So I was like, okay, I can do that. But I, I'm definitely more of a by ear kind of person. Um, so. Same. Uh, I, I mean, I took piano lessons, so I can read a few notes, but just the bare minimum. I only had a year of lessons, and then I kind of forgot everything I learned. So, but uh, so my background, I've pretty much filled up all the space. I know, again, don't know exactly where you're at with your painting. Totally fine. Um, if you're not quite here yet. It's like I'm trying not to do the outline too much of, of the edges. So, no, it looks good. It's kind of neat. It kind of reminds me of like a Lord of the Rings kind of tunnel because <laughs> you got yeah. a nice bright spot there. yeah that's what i was going for <laughs> of, course, of course you were mixing lord of the rings and jason so with no, this no, we don't want this to dry too quickly and so um i'm going to we still have all this mess that's in here now i did say before that we're not going to be rinsing our brush but we've been painting for a while and sometimes we took little breaks if it seems like the brush is getting kind of sticky and it's not really spilling and like the paint's just congealing too much. I would recommend then kind of rinsing your brush, not too much, just basically kind of put it in the water like so, and then just kind of pat it on the towel. You'll notice a lot of these colors come out. And so this way, not all the colors gone, but this way uh, we don't want any water left over in our brush, but this way um, the brush is still usable um, to spread the paint out and everything. Cause we don't want it to congeal while we're working on it. And I will then re-dip back into my blue and get just the wee bit of black here. We'll notice that it, there's more blue than there is black here. And starting way out in the corners, again, I'm coming back to home base, of course, as always. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start dabbing right here like we've done before to see just how dark this black and blue is going to be. And we want to be very careful and take our time with this last portion of our background. Um, okay. we're going to be doing some more in the foreground here. Uh, it's kind of like we're working on our background and our foreground, um, at the same time, but we'll discuss more of that later on. Don't want to get you confused. Okay. <laughs> Just kind of, so I'm going to so get a little better, bit of, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lot better of an experience than, uh, than art class for sure. Yeah, well, a lot of times in art class, you know, again, you're, you, like you said, you're kind of getting graded. There's a certain expectancy with this. A lot of this, I mean, of course, I want you to walk away with a wonderful painting that you're proud of, but it's a lot of times it's the experience of itself, you know, hanging out and talking, getting to know mm -hmm. people while learning something. And there's, you know, a lot of times I was also in school. I, of course, don't want to be here for three hours, if I'm going to be honest. I got stuff I need to do. But <laughs> it's kind of like low key. You know, there's no stress. We've been painting no. for an hour. And... Um, this is you know. a very relaxing. Well, good. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not I, quite I'm as very... soothing as Bob Ross, but, you know, I try to keep it chill. <laughs> it's okay. By the way, they're sitting appropriately today just for you. They decided I, to behave. I appreciate that. That's yeah, right. It's a family channel here. <laughs> it is. You know what? This is the longest I've gone without swearing on a stream, I think. So Ooh. it's a miracle. It's yeah, miracle. I always try to I try to adhere and respect the rules of the of the host. Even though I, you didn't explicitly say no swearing. I didn't. I didn't. I just was like, all right, you know. This is unspoken. Like, I'm not going to just swear like a sailor like I do in my streams. Yeah, on your streams. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know, I just I kind of gauge, you know, the personality the hosts have because we've we've talked a few yeah. times. You know, you're mm -hmm. still kind of like we're we still are kind of getting to know each other, even though like we've known of each other for like five months, six months now. <laughs> Gosh, has it already been that long? <laughs> uh, December, yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. Time, time flies, dude. Yeah. That th th those are still some of my favorite streams um, on Tim's channel. This is up there already, just because oh, it's good. it's a new experience. Well, it's, yeah, I'm starting it's to get to know you more, and it's 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 very nice. And you make this fun and easy. Not so much easy, but you know. Right. Fun. Well, wait until we get to the Jason aspect. It'll get a little bit more tricky, but I'll still I'll I'll guide you through. Okay. <laughs> I'll guide you through. So you can see here, I've got some darkness on the edge. It's not as dark as I want it to be, but I'm just working little by little. I want to take my time um, and just add layers and layers here. And uh, Joker's voice, I'll have to message you. Feel free to invite me for a painting lesson anytime. <laughs> sure. Well, let me guess. We're gonna we're gonna paint Joker. <laughs> now I'm sure you have other interests. But yeah, we're just going to stick to the edge. And again, let me bring back my original painting so you can kind of have an idea of what we're going for. Again, this is much darker than what I have right now, but that's because I'm going to layer it later on. Um, I just want to build up the darkness first to get a feel of what it's going to look like. And I kind of bounce back and forth between the blue and the green and the black so that, it, again, it kind of kind of matches building up lots of contrast here. Like I said, fancy word for just meaning the opposite of something. So we've got darkness on the edges, which all of this is going to help. We're doing so much in our background here, um, Justin, that sometimes you really just kind of take a step back and be like, wow, there's, there's a lot going on in a good way. So not only are we, of course, filling this up with some really cool colors, our color choices help us decide what the feel of this is going to be. So our color choices are setting the scene for like the forest, you know, kind of looks a little bit foresty. And, um, and also it kind of has like this fog aspect to it. So, you know, you can kind of leave that to your imagination. And um, then there's also the fact that we're going from light to dark. So we have, you know, kind of like a representation of good versus evil but also to help frame in the character, we've got the brightness over here with the dark edges so that everything will point to Jason. Um, all perfectly placed for a purpose. So like I said, a lot going on here in our background. And while our background, and I always tell people this, while your background might not necessarily be the most important part of your painting, it does help set the scene. It does tell the story. And because of the fact it's surrounded by black tells us like maybe it's nighttime or at least falling into evening, depending on how much darkness you have. Pre evening. It could be, pre be pre-evening. I like this word. I've heard somebody else use that. I'm like, yes. Why is that not a word? Um, it is now. It is now, right? Well, I mean, the American language is always evolving. So, yeah. yeah. And it's all made up. <laughs> Someone, a lot someone of them. Yeah. Exactly. Like all nonsense. All of it. But it's a way for us to communicate and convey the message in the in the best way possible. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. That did not need to be said, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, we get philosophical here sometimes. You know, that's interesting that what painting will do for people. All of a sudden they kind of talk a little bit deeper about stuff. And um, I think it's really cool because uh it just it kind of just naturally happens you can't 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 really help it yeah something yeah, about it yeah this is this is definitely not something that well, i thought would bring out just sort of these different thoughts so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm um, very... and I don't... Mm -hmm. yeah no go ahead well I, and i don't know if it's because of the fact that um the fact that we're creating something right so there's just this this idea of a, of a connection with even the real world. It's like, you know, everything was created and here we are, we're making a representation of something that's out in the world. And I don't want to say it makes you feel powerful, but it makes you kind of appreciate 
what's out there and you start focusing on the details of things even in life that's why a lot of times you know people can't really relate to artists because we see the world differently <clears throat> because we see it's not so much that we see the world differently we see the world more detailed than normal people because we have to focus on where's the lighting um what color is it it's not just blue it's got to be a specific blue and it's got a touch of this in it and a touch of that and so all of a sudden, I think when people start painting, they kind of, they start realizing things about life, things about the world around them that they would never have otherwise considered um, unless they were maybe drawing or, or painting or something like that. There's so many life lessons that can be learned when it comes to art, you know, about patience, about subjective beauty and ugliness um purpose intentions so it does tend to make people somewhat philosophical <laughs> oh yeah okay i i kind of like where this is going so far with the background oh hang on yes it's, it's kind of really basic ah. it's very blue i didn't realize that the lighting is not great well, that's Where? okay. We'll just pretend like we're on the set of Twilight and it's just really got that, <laughs> um, it's really got that filter going on. on. <laughs> I'm going to start working a little bit more darkness towards the top. Okay. And just... Uh, oh, nope. yeah. Yeah. It is It is so dark. Uh, the, the lighting. I don't have a direct light that, go, oh. that faces the painting. So it looks darker than it actually is. I've just realized this happy accident. Happy little accident. Is that what is that what uh, the preferred term? Not mistake, but happy accident. Right. No mistakes, just happy little accidents. And I'm just going to kind of take also here and uh, pat out my black and just kind of dab whatever's left over. Be very careful with this. Very gentle with the hand, and kind of just gradually bring some of that black in around here, so it just kind of looks like bramble maybe. In the background, okay. is that is that a word? Do people know what that is? Bramble. Brambles. Okay. Has to do with I, I don't know. We stopped uh, learning vocabulary words in the seventh grade. Uh, okay, I never. <laughs> Dictionary.com word of the day. But I'm just gonna start bringing a little bit. You'll see. Like I said, I talked about that fluffiness where I don't have much black in the brush. Whatever's here, I just kind of bring it in a little bit. So I've got some little specks. What I call the little pixels and just kind of really help the darkness circulate in here. I'm almost done with my background. There we go, just a little bit I'm more here. I'm pretty satisfied there. with my background. Excellent, if you like the way your background looks and you don't want to add anything to it, please trust your, your, your inner creative. Do what looks mm -hmm. good. If you're afraid you might mess it up, if you're afraid that it looks, it, it would ruin it. If you think just because it looks good enough that you don't want to do anything, then don't don't mind my don't mind me and don't do anything rash. And I'm just gonna kind of gently bring some of this in here because, like I said, I want it to look kind of like the sticks and leaves and twigs. Uh, Joker's voice said, "Wow, you invoked Twilight." I did. Look, I like the first movie. I'm not gonna lie, can't hide it. People who know me know me. That wasn't bad. <laughs> that that yeah, first yeah. one, not terrible, but I I just couldn't stand. I, like I, I just couldn't stand the lack of personality in the main character. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Like I didn't watch it for her. <laughs> Not that I necessarily I know, watched. We all dude. know. I wasn't that person, but I just there was something about the story that I liked. So anyway, I think I've yeah. done the final touches here of my background. And again, if I bring my original here, is you know pretty much the same idea, a little bit different, a little bit wonkier of a circle. But I'm going to put this brush because I won't need it until the end. We will be returning okay. to bringing this bush, but I don't want, I don't want the paint to harden on the bristles. So I will put it in my water and swizzle it around and make some murky, murky juice over here. There we go. And just leave it in my cup of water so that nothing. Uh, okay. Happens. I know I so, shouldn't wash my hands whoops. right now because it would be pointless. Right. Exactly. But I yeah. think I will a little bit because it is a little wet. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Help yourself. Let me see okay. here. Let me, whoops, wrong one. Let me remove this. Wait. Oh, hi. No, sorry. I was trying to 
do something else. <laughs> Getting accustomed to these. Uh, here we go. I just made things a little bit more difficult. So anyway, thank you so much. So guys thus far for following along in this journey. Hopefully you're liking the process and um, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and maybe share if you are so inclined. And uh, when Justin gets back, we're going to have him talk a little bit about what he does on his channel. So you can get a little bit more in depth and your knowledge there. And, um, that way it also, I was telling Justin, it's going to kind of like kill two birds with one stone because of the fact that we need our background to be perfectly dry before we apply the stencil. We're coming down to the most important part of our painting, which is putting Jason on here. And that's going to be great. He's going to look amazing with these backgrounds. Again, no wrong way to do these backgrounds, just good and better ways um, at a time. Um, I see this comment over here. Joker's voice says it's a shame that Robert Pattison has had the stigma of Twilight throughout his career. It's true. It's one of those things that once you're known for something, it's hard to get away from it no matter what you do. I mean, he did a good job in Twilight, and a lot of people loved him in Twilight. But, you know, I think hopefully with the fact that him playing the Batman might help him. But, might, but he's just always going to be known as the sparkly dude no matter what he does, because that was just like the thing that seemed to really launch his career. But uh, yeah, again, be sure to follow us. You can follow uh, Jason, not Jason. <laughs> Justin, you can follow Jason. You can follow Justin. Um, on Jason Twitter. will be following you, <laughs> if anything. All his information is in the description box below. But if you wanted to, while we wait for the background to dry, would you like to tell the people where they can find you? What exactly do you do on your channel? Um, well, we talk about the strange, the silly, and the serious on This Week in BS on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. I've had the pleasure of having Tabitha on uh, three times now, and each time has been a very, very great experience. Um, I always enjoy having you on. You give a different perspective. You're a lot cleaner than, than myself and a lot of the guests. <laughs> Uh, so I, I tend to, and I try my best to behave myself just <laughs> a little bit more. I and try to that. be a little bit more proper, if you will. Oh, um, nice. And, you did uh, that. <laughs> yeah. And back, back in the day, I, I used to do a lot of uh, movie reviews and like anything to kind of prop up the channel, like what everybody else was doing, like Geeks and Gamers and Josiah and Odin, just because I took inspiration from that. Um, mm -hmm. And so I had, I had like Mandalorian reviews uh, and I had uh, all these different kinds of videos like uh my grand do you know who cecil says is i've heard of him yeah yeah so he made a video on uh like a kind of a satire video on the wizard of oz and how glenda was was the real villain uh and was mean to the wicked witch of the west um oh. so i thought it would be a good idea to have my grandparents react to the video <laughs> And uh, that that is uh, one of my favorite videos that I've ever done. And since my grandmother has passed away, we oh. can no longer do those. It holds a very special place in my heart. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to check that video out. Have to go oh yeah. It. And uh, if you'd like something a little bit more thrilling, I uh, also did a little vlog of me skydiving uh, back in late 2019. Ooh, what was that experience like? very scary uh the whole the whole reaction leading up to it on the car ride there and either the actual video of me skydiving uh and just freaking out flailing my arms as we're falling out of the sky uh <laughs> it, it, right? it was quite it was quite it was quite the thrill and i would love to do it again you would love to do it again it's interesting how how humans are like that, right? Like the logic just kind of gets thrown out of the window for the fun. Like I'm going to just th fall out of a plane, go crashing to the earth. That's okay. Cause I've got a parachute and <laughs> put all my hopes into it. <laughs> well, I had the, my, uh, the guy who was, it was like a tandem skydive. Uh, the one oh, that yeah. uh, where there's a person attached to you. So you are safe for the most part. Um, yeah, there's always a, a, some slight danger of falling out of the sky, but yeah, always a risk, you know, but yeah, there is always that risk. But it's is it one that you're willing willing to take? Sure, because right. you know, like ninety nine percent of the time, you will be just fine and land on the ground, no injuries whatsoever. Um, have you ever gone before? No, I've wanted to. I have a severe case of 
a fear, a phobia, uh, like whatever the word is, a fear of heights. Like it, like oh. even in video, even in video games, when uh, like I'm playing like ESO or something like that, and I accidentally fall off of a, a mountain because I was following my sister in law, um, <laughs> she all of a sudden would be like, "No!" and I'm like, "What?" And I, it's too late. My camel's going too fast, and so I jump off the cliff. My stomach will literally lurch as I'm watching. The, computer graphics just fall to the ground like it just it's yeah uh, that's something that you want to do is skydive at some point because i think it would be a really cool experience to be able to see the world that way but you know it, i am i'm like i tell people i'm like smeagol okay and Gollum. like i am a dual personality i both love and hate to do things simultaneously <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good morning, Kathy Skywalker. Hello, and the McKinney Draws. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. The, I am here with the Justin Proper, and I'm just uh, I'm teaching him how to paint. Jason, we are waiting for our backgrounds to dry, and I just had Justin kind of talk to us a little bit about what he does on his channel. And so what do you have? Do you have anything up and coming? Do you always just consistently talk about stuff in the news, or do you plan to change things up, or you like the way he's going? Um. So I enjoy, I, I'm not, look, I'm not looking to get, uh, you know, 400,000, like a million, 6 million subscribers or anything. I like the, the, the subtle anonymity where like people that I know in re, like in real life, uh, in my, in my day job, don't have a clue what I do. And I prefer that. Yeah. Uh, this is, um, cause you know, the things I say on the internet, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but I also, I, I just enjoy uh, just having a good laugh uh, and just having a good time uh, with people that I enjoy being around. And mm -hmm. so uh, um, that, that's what that's what I love about doing that show. Um, I am going to see the new Top Gun on Tuesday. So okay. I'm, I, I, I try to not make promises or anything because, <laughs> you know, but that that's something that I, I might actually make a video about. Um, and, uh, you know, just try to get back into the flow of making regular videos because they're very time consuming. And uh, a lot of yeah, it, and I get the same amount of views as I would a live stream. A live stream takes a lot less of my time. It's more fun. I get to hang out with people. Whereas yeah. when I make a regular video, I'm editing a, a screen of just me talking to a camera. And it's a little odd. Like, I, I don't like it sometimes. Unless yeah, yeah. I, it can be yeah. really awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I it's feel yeah. Proof, proof that I'm not actually a narcissist. I'm like, I, if I, I don't, I not, I don't have that big of an ego. Like it's just one of those <laughs> things that I've realized about myself that I get very embarrassed easily. Um, oh. But if it turns out to be good, then I will praise it to the high heavens. Uh, but go. hopefully that kind of answered your question. Yeah, yeah, it does. Absolutely. Uh, Top Gun, the Doctor Strange dethroner. Yeah, I I got into, let me check out my, my background is almost dry. How is yours coming along, Justin? Oh, yes. Let's, uh, let's see that. I don't think it is quite dry yet. It is very, very wet. Is um, it shiny? It is shiny. Yeah. Okay, so the shininess tells us that, yeah, it's still damp. Um, we can give it a little bit longer. Um, there are secret ways and methods to drying it. You can either take your canvas and just kind of wave it around like so, or you can take a piece of paper and fan it across. I don't recommend using your hand because that's just going to make your wrist really tired because it's just doing this constantly. And we, we need these because we're not done yet. Uh, almost done. But... Uh, yeah, thank you for all the newcomers that are here and uh, all that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. So the Top Gun, I was talking to somebody uh, a while ago and they were like all excited about Top Gun because, oh, it's great, man's movie, blah, blah, blah. And so we watched the trailer together and uh, they're like, what do you think, Tabitha? And I'm like, correct me if I'm wrong, but the premise of this movie is old man teaches younger people how to fly jet. And of course, I was in a room full of like, you know, the chat was full of guys. The the panel was nothing but guys. And they're all just kind of like, you know, that moment when you're kind of right, but it's kind of disrespectful to be that right about something. They're like, well, there's more to it than that. Like, not really. Like, <laughs> not, not really. Well, well, I'm not I'm not. Hey. 
You muted yourself. I don't know why it does that from time to time. But anyway, I, I again, if you want to watch Top, I won't hate you for it. I don't think it's stupid to like it. It's just, I wasn't impressed by the trailer. I'm like, it's literally just him teaching younger people how to fly the jet. Is that what I'm understanding? Like, um, well, plot secrecy. I don't know. They didn't reveal anything about the plot. So, okay. So I need to, to wait for more. They're like, well, did you ever watch the first one? And I'm like, yeah, but I was younger then. So I probably need to watch it now. But even the first one, they're like, oh, basically it's kind of like, well, it's a man's movie. I'm like, don't even start with that crap. I'm like, I grew up on man's movies. Like, I love me some war movies, some westerns, all that kind of stuff. Like, so it has nothing to do with that. I just didn't think it was very interesting a movie. But again, that was back when I was younger. So maybe I need to watch it again to kind of refresh. But I cannot say that I'm with everybody like, oh, my gosh, Tom Cruise is coming back. Top Gun, Maverick. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah i mean it's not something that i'm trying to overexcite myself uh with but it you know i've heard good things about it so that mm -hmm. is what is getting me excited yeah so i've heard I mean, i've heard good things and i'm 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 genuinely genuinely thrilled that uh a lot of people have been enjoying uh the the film so far the what i have heard so it, it would be very nice and refreshing if we got just a fun movie you know, yeah. that doesn't have all the all the crap in it that you normally would. Right. Because that, that's what we need sometimes. Just fun, good popcorn mm -hmm. movies. And well, like um, Joe I think voice says member berries. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm not excited about this movie either is the fact that we've we've kind of mentioned that in different streams is the fact that Hollywood seems to have run out of ideas. And the only way they can seem to get people excited about films anymore is the fact that or is, is the way to, to bring in the people that we grew up with, which I'm not necessarily opposed to, but it seems to be a reoccurring theme where instead of new fresh actors and new storylines, we're like, okay, what if we took somebody from the 80s and showed what they're doing now? You know, And that, again, it's not necessarily a problem, but it does seem to be like, Okay. I mean, like, I, it's no secret, I'm a huge fan of Avatar, and they're bringing out Avatar 2 this year, supposed to be. Um, I feel like that's different, you know, even though you could say it's kind of the member berries because it was such a blockbuster hit back in the time. But I at the same time... How. I still uh, don't know how. Don't... Look. So, the fact that... <laughs> we'll bring them back on later. <laughs> <laughs> Now you got me all red in the face. Like I just slapped you in the face or something. <laughs> so good. You know what? I've never once, I've never once booted you from my stream. Like, thank you, Tabitha, for coming. Now, now I, I got, I got you. We obviously, <laughs> we obviously have diff different levels of respect for each other, but. Um... <laughs> But at least with the Avatar movies, it's like a continuation of the story that is introducing a whole bunch of, I don't know, I see it differently, where rather than just, I don't know, I, I have to think harder about how to explain this because there are some similarities. They are bringing back some of the older characters like Sigourney Weaver and stuff, but it, she, she's not going to be the same person. It's going to be, well, at least the rumors say, because I mean, well, I can't tell you. You've never seen, have you seen Avatar? I haven't seen it in 10 years. So that's why I, my memory is faded on on the movie. I just remember going like, okay, that was cool. But like $2.5 billion cool. I was like, oh, wow. I would, Hexity, I would yeah, survive. man. I saw that thing in three theaters three times and was the best 3D movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you know, the worst one I've seen, well, Shark Boy and Lava Girl by default. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of uh, of that decade, uh, the, the Hobbit, the first Hobbit movie, and so it was it mm. was just like one of those things that wasn't supposed to be in 3D. So, but, but I don't know. Did, did, was it a was it a better? Did you see it in 2D as well, like in the theater, or did you always go to the? Oh no, 3D? I only saw it once in 3D. The rest were in 2D. And, uh, oh, okay. Was there something about that experience that it just popped to you? All the different colors and the like. What what appealed to you about it? Because I'm not trying to like just say like, oh, mm -hmm. like you know why why do you like this so much? Like judging. I'm, no, I'm curious. Like I'm I'm past that judging phase. I'm not a teenager anymore. 
Yeah, everybody likes different things. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So you want to know like the three D, what it meant to me, or what? You oh no no no, no 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 uh, no. Uh, I guess what the what? How did that enhance the experience and just just the movie in general? What what makes that special to you? So when you see it in two D, I mean it's brilliant. The colors are everywhere. It's magnificent you know, all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. And it's just, a, for me, it's a good story. I was very intrigued by what was happening. It was very different. Never seen anything like it before. People make the comment, oh, it's just Pocahontas and John Smith all over again. I'm like, yeah, yeah yes I can no. see that. Yes and no. There's a whole lot more to it because there's mm -hmm. kind of like plots within plots. Uh, I don't think Pocahontas ever got that deep. But, <laughs> um, no, so that not, was just amazing. Quite. So that was just mesmerizing for me as a whole, as the story, the music, the story, and then, of course, the graphics were amazing. But then when I saw it in 3D, I'm not kidding. So the first, like one of the first scenes that they open up with, when you see it in 2D, it's they're in outer space. And that water droplet is just kind of hovering in front of Jake Sully. And that's our, you know, whatever. That's nothing special. But when we saw it in 3D, I mean... That was the first movie. Maybe it's nostalgia. I don't know. Wow factor. But I had seen 3D movies before that. But it was so crystal clear. Like, it really felt like that water droplet was, like, right here in front of me. And, I mean, the scenes throughout the movie were fantastic. But what the, the dynamic of what that scene alone did in the opening was just so impressive. It was just just bewildering. And so throughout the movie, you know, when they ha go through the grass and and the guns are up and different elements, you know, coming out. But that is the one scene that sticks in my mind the most. And it was just like, wow. I mean, the what attention an to detail. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm definitely going to give it another shot before the movie comes out. Um, I I thought I would never, I'm not going to pay to see it, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, you you have, you have somewhat convinced me. Wow. You know, that's what I do. No. Um, so Joker's voice says it's Fern Gully mixed with Pocahontas. Yes, I can see that. I loved Fern Gully. You know, and that's the thing, too. You know, are there any more original ideas? I guess I'm on the side of the fence where I felt like this was really a fresh kind of film. But, yeah, if you look closely, you can see the similarity between, like, Fern Gully and Pocahontas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Soul Assassin says, I thought it was dances with space smurfs. Hey, you know, not everybody likes it. <laughs> not everybody's a big fan of sci-fi or they just like a certain way of sci-fi. This was a lot of like sci-fi with native tribal aspects, less about star cruisers and things mm -hmm. like this. So maybe that's one reason also why people weren't as fond of it. You know, like when we have Star Wars and Star Trek, there's a lot of technology. Um, for the story versus this one where there wasn't even a lot of like magic, like the force or whatever like that. There was some elements there, but it was really a lot of like, yeah, native stuff, like ground level kind of thinking. Whereas, and I think that's what I liked about it was where you had a lot of the natural versus the technical and the, you know, the machines and things like that. I just thought it was great. Anyway, my background is nice and dry. How's it going over there? Because we're gonna have to get started with Jason. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. It's uh, no, it's 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 good. It's only the uh, the background that's still a little shiny, but uh, in the in okay. the corners with well, the black. So it, I think I it's a good time. If it's the white area and the green area that is um dry, then we can move on because we're not painting yeah. up in the corners. So let me get my okay. my art cam officially titled art cam on here uh so joker's yeah. voice says uh, well soul assassin says avatar was a good movie very different from what the normal exactly from what normal or traditional sci-fi is star wars is more of a science fantasy than traditional science fi. yeah you know there's all of these different elements and and i mean i've met crazy people that don't even like star wars so what you gonna do you can't help everybody um so i'm gonna take <laughs> my character and of course, my markers are gone, but I can use my background now to kind of figure out where I would like to place him, where I think he would look best. And um, I kind of like him right about here. Just make sure he's straight up and down, too. We don't want to have a crooked Jason. Um, unless you want to pretend like he's falling, that's totally fine. But then we're going to need a pencil or a pen. I think I'll use a pen today. 
so that way it's easier to see on the screen. All right. And then we just want to. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I was probably just going to get a pen that's not my better pen. Sure. <laughs> yeah, pen, um, a pen or a pencil, like I said, will work just fine with a pencil. You know, you could always attempt to try it. It won't be as seen as easily, but we're going to be using a lot of darker colors and everything. So I don't think that's going to be problematic. Absolutely. And J Joker, what? Seriously? No, I've met those types of morons as well. You know, I can't really understand why people don't like Star Wars. Personally, it's like people who say they don't like Lord of the Rings. That is very difficult for me to comprehend. But as I've matured, I've had to learn some people just have bad taste. No, <laughs> some people just have preferences, even though I can't understand them. And that's what's called being an adult, by the way, for people who you know, yell at other people for not liking certain things. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. For, for me, it's hyperbolic. Like, you know, clearly as it is for you as well, um, or for the most part. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't judge people based on, based on those kind of things. I mean, what I liked about Avatar, the good thing that I would say about that is I like the aspect of the main character, uh, wanting to get into that world because he is, uh, you know, paraplegic and he mm -hmm. lost, lost the movement of his legs. And so this world gives him that freedom back. Right. That's what I enjoy. That's what I take away from it. Well, and that's what I think is very different between Pocahontas and, uh, you know, Avatar is the fact that John Smith wasn't trying to become a native. Yeah. And I mean, if we really wanted to get down to the nitty gritty, Disney really messed up that story because it's not historically accurate anyway. So, <laughs> but we are going to go and trace very carefully around this character, making sure we get all the definition that we can. So it makes it easier for later on. Here we go. Of course, if we make any little accidents, little happy accidents or unhappy accidents, we can. Um, hey, Kaylee, good to see you. Hope you are having a good day. Good morning. And uh, yeah, we want to have as much definition for our character as possible, which will help tell us later where you know some of these colors are. Do you happen to have scissors nearby? Yes, I do. Excellent, because we're kind of going to tear apart Jason here in just a second to help make it easier for you to figure out where to put the colors because painting people can be kind of difficult. I don't think any of us could disagree with that. So we're going to try to make it as easy as possible. But first we're going to get the main portion of his outline and then we're going to cut around Jason in specific places um, like his head. We're going to basically remove <laughs> his head so that we can uh, know where his shirt needs to go. And we'll just take it little by okay. little. Trust, trust the process. It's going to look amazing. And so, yeah, like we had said way in the beginning of this stream, for those that are new here, I am not a huge or at all horror movie person. Just not like that. But it, when I do these streams with YouTubers, it's really cool because I give the YouTubers the, the freedom to choose what the topic is. And then I paint it. I present it to them and say, is this good? Would you like to do it this way? And they will tell me yes or no. And it gets me out of my comfort zone. It pushes me to try different things and um, just, just to see what else I could do um, and do things that I would never imagine in my life to do. I would never in my life think I should try to paint like something horror, you know, something <laughs> from a franchise that I have no interest in. But um, this is pretty cool. I like the way I'm going to show the original for those that don't know. This is what we're aiming for. I like the way that this turned out, even though I'm not a huge fan of the theme. It still turned out, I think, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or anything as a really cool picture which i'm sure justin's will be just as cool oh yes absolutely oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah in its own unique happy accident way <laughs> happy accident way soul assassin would you watch a horror themed star wars film um probably not depending on what like, i don't mind a thriller i don't mind a good thriller but i i just don't do like slasher films and uh all that kind of stuff oh that's so, okay it's just yeah, not, not my everyone's Thing. Yeah, it's fine. Oh yeah, I know. It's totally fine. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm focused on trying to get the nope. line. You're um, good. You're fine. Take your time. There you yeah. go. Going around. I've got my scissors handy. About to uh, perform some surgery here. One call it surgery. It's a decapitation. Decapitation. Yeah, it's true. An operation of a kind. <laughs> oh, well, and we're going to... I'm Jason sorry. Go ahead. It. Jason deserves it. He does deserve it. He's getting his comeuppance today. And then we're bringing him back from the dead by painting him back on here. Um, we're going to keep his clothing pretty basic. I'm going to show you some really easy tips how to add some detail to clothing without doing a lot of extra work because the main purpose um, of Jason or the main icon of Jason is like his mask and his machete. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right. I think so, I got a good outline done. You want me to still have them on? So, uh, well, that's fine if you want to. What I recommend, though, so pay attention to where the sleeves are um, for his arms. I'm just going to peel him mm -hmm. back like this. And just kind of do a little line across the bottom there just to indicate. And then we also want to make sure that we get these little cutouts for his arms and his hands here. So I just kind of just wing it. I don't make it too dramatic. It just basically lets us know that he has a waistline and he has sleeves. Okay. Try to a little bit bolder. Uh, Kathy Skywalker says, I'm a horror fan. Uh, I love the American Horror Story and The Walking Dead, for example. We talked about The Walking Dead. I am too sensitive for things like that. Can't handle it. It's just, you know. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on his uh, feet here. Just make a line where his pants might stop at his boots, even though we're going to kind of cover those up a little bit later on. This just kind of helps with that. And then I would recommend making the hem of his shirt to separate his pants. So because of the fact that the background <clears throat> is lighting him, of course, from behind. So we really wouldn't see in the, in the normal and the natural here in the real world. We wouldn't see a lot of the do definition. We wouldn't see a lot of the um, details. So that's why we're going to keep it pretty low key with the shirt and the pants and just emphasize mainly on the helmet and the machete. So here we go. Just kind of. Okay. There we go. Exactly, Kathy Skywalker, to each their own. Exactly. Like we said, with Avatar, not everybody likes it. A lot of people apparently give it hate, but at the same time, a lot of people give it love. It just, that's how we're all different, you know? And then, I don't want to move too fast for you. Oh, well, that's okay. Now, this is, this is, this is the tricky part for me. Mm -hmm. is doing this. So this is this is the outline that I have. It's a very basic, very basic outline. Um, yes. Doesn't get all the details. I don't know if the lighting is all that great, but you get That's the good. point. I can see the machete and everything. Can you see on my screen where I've put the um, the lines to mark where his shirt and his hem are? Yes. Okay. Yes, do you have I it will... on there already? Um, yeah, I will gauge that as best as possible. So Yeah, um, exactly. And again, use your stencil as reference. I think unlike mine, uh, my printer kind of gave out on me. I think you have the entirety of his outfit printed out. Yes. Okay, great. So that'd be a little bit easier to follow. Yeah. Bikini Draw says that's a great start for the outline. Exactly. And I mean, again, this is just the outline. It's not meant to be the finished product, so we can always adjust things with the paint as we need. Okay, let's see. 
I do realize I went a little bit too deep into uh, in, into the paint for his uh, for like his left side. <laughs> a little too right. deep. Okay. Now I got to match him back up to tr retrace that. Do appreciate the encouragement. Not I. Yeah. I've, I guess I'm being told not too bad for like someone who never does this. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you, for those who play video games, we understand that XP points are where it's at. So even if this doesn't turn out exactly how we thought it would, we're already a better artist than what we were when we first started because now we have more experience. Yes. All right. <laughs> R2. Oh, there he is. How many times has she told you that you were doing it wrong, Justin? <laughs> Not once, not, not once. once. I am shocked. Well, it's also because I can't see him painting along the way, R2. So I just have to be encouraging right. and hope for the best. But hang on. How is oh. that? There we go. Yes, very good. Yep. Okay. Do you have it for the pants as well down here um, or the hem of his jeans? Um. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay. I'm just doing kind of a, a basic outline yeah no, nothing special i'm not doing anything fancy either <clears throat> okay yep now um up here on his uh his chest where his arms are and everything as well i'm going to just kind of drag a line upwards a little bit like so kind of disfigures him a little bit here but uh well he's already disfigured but this way when we do our brush stroke pattern it's really going to help us separate all that Okay. <laughs> R2. I'll let Justin read that. Yep. Don't forget to shadow Jason's crotch properly. Oh, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Terrible, R2. You're terrible. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I forget that R2 also has, has that kind of sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Is there is there a reason that you're not like a fan of that kind of stuff? Like I can imagine you like not enjoying any part of American Pie <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, no. I mean, look, I'm not going to be so pious to say that I have never laughed at jokes like this. Like I thought what R2 said was funny, and you know, um, yeah. like it's not like I don't find things funny, like that are inappropriate yeah. or whatever, like that. I just um, depending on who I'm around, if it's mixed. You okay, know, mixed company and things like that. Um, you know, I, it's just not really my sense of humor, but it's not like I've never laughed at it. I will, I, like I said, I never, I don't want to give that impression like I, an R2, I know I can't help myself. So, but yeah, no, Ameri <laughs> movies like American Pie, I can't do anything with it. Like, It kind of, for me, harpens back to, you know, things that I found funny when I was, I guess, in middle school, but, <laughs> but not as into that anymore. Um, what yeah, I yeah, pretty style to, changes. Yeah. What I tend to enjoy, um, I guess, as I, as I get older is uh, how, how, like the, the, the journey of the characters, what they go through, their more emotional moments. That's what I, I've enjoyed uh, more or less. Like I want, mm -hmm. what I like about Scream is that uh, I know in Friday the 13th, they don't have too many characters for you to be attached to. That's not the point of the series at all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, let's say, for example. Um, well, really you know, quickly, while you talk, let's yeah. do two things at one time. We're going yeah. to basically cut out Jason's head and neck. Okay. So oh, okay. Where the exposed flesh is. So go ahead and do that while you talk. Okay. What I have enjoyed about Scream, for example, you know, first one coming out in 95 and the most recent one came out earlier this year, is I like to see the character growth. Mm -hmm. um, I like to see where, where all these characters that we've grown attached to for 25 years end up uh, being and uh, how they evolve. And that's what I enjoy about it. Not necessarily... Not necessarily the kills and the brutality, but you know where where they end up. Like there's a there's a cute love story in Scream, so it's just it's cool to see that evolution. Isn't that kind of strange? How 
you enjoy one aspect and then a completely different one as you get older with the same film. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you watch it and you're like, or some movies, it's just like, why, why did I ever like this? <laughs> Some, <laughs> or some of them, you yeah. go back and you're like, why did I ever hate this? This movie's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's something like that, that, uh, that I appreciate. Um, it's why I liked uh, most about, about Avatar was that uh, the protagonist's struggle being a paraplegic. Um, not necessarily, oh, look, look at this. It looks pretty and what have you. You know. I don't yeah. care about that as much. So you um, just yeah. you just did the hockey mask. Oh, oh, you cut a little deeper in. Okay. Yeah, the flesh and the hockey mask. So this way, when we put this back on here, we can, mm -hmm. um, if you want to, you can kind of freehand some of the stuff, but I'm going to do the V that's right in here and then do the line work as well. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and just kind of figure out where the hockey mask kind of, starts and ends like so or you could just then afterwards cut around cut the neck off and just put the hockey mouth like do layers if you need to i just went ahead and put the circle down here so that way it's already taken care of okay so let's see yeah i'm gonna set that to the side Okay. And then the one last thing that we'll need to do whenever we finish off the uh, the mask here uh, is to uh, just go ahead and put over on this machete to indicate where his wrist is covering. And uh, here, let me, it's just easier if I do this and where the exposed part is, the wraparound, so we can see this hopefully. Good morning, Lemon Pie. Good morning. How you doing, Lemon Pie? So frequent viewer of my channel as well. Okay, I'm teaching Justin how to do Friday the 13th. Jason. <laughs> and we're almost done. We're getting to the main point, point of the painting here. It's going to be good. So we're just going to finish off Justin. Yeah, finish me off. <laughs> uh, we're just going to finish off Jason. And then we're going to put a little bit of foliage in the front to build up the layers to give it some dimension here. And we'll be done. Yes, yes. All right. But until that time, if you're new here. If I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a, it's not a request. Exactly. Not <laughs> okay, so this is a much better example. I'm, I'm going to make this edge a little, little sharper here. Okay. Boom. Okay. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Try yes, not to there we go. I see all that goodness there. Looks fantastic. Yep. It's going to be great. Seems like he's emerging from the trees. Mm, exactly. Okay. So we got all that going. We are going to start off with something very, very easy. We're going to be taking our half inch flat brush. Okay. The okay. smaller flat and brush. This yes, one right here. Half inch. Let me, oops, let me get this bigger. Yes, yes. This one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice and small, half an inch. This. Good. So we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. We're going to just take some brown here, just a little bit. And we're not going to do anything too impressive, but we're just going to fill in the shoes. Okay. Just carefully. So the burnt um, umber is the good one to use? Yes. Whatever dark brown you have, that would be great. Okay. They both look brown, but you said one of them looked like mustard, and I'm like, I'd rather not. Yeah. yeah, Sienna. Yeah, it's a little bit has a little bit more yellow in it. Yeah, and then I guess I go ahead and recommend that you put um, your red paint, your crimson, whatever color you might have. That's kind of like a darkish red. Go ahead and put that on whatever's closest to blood um, on your palette as well. Mm. Crimson red. Okay, let's do that. Okay. 
Oh, my palette is all full. <laughs> Hopefully I won't need to use any more. So Nah, you'll be all right. And you can always just scrape it off. And, uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Half we're just going to carefully start filling in the shoe. Nothing fancy. We don't really want to take a lot of time with like the, the shoes and the pants because we're not going to do too much detail work in there. It's just really filling in the color because we're going to be, we're going to be um, covering some of his shoes. Uh, yours, we might do a little bit differently because your compositions, like I said, a little different than mine. So we'll adjust accordingly. So we want to make sure that we do fill in the shoes just in case any part of it is exposed. So that way it doesn't look incomplete. All right. Here we go. And when you're done with your painting, Justin, you can go find your art teacher and be like, look at this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, like, see, not, not an example of what not to do. Art is subjective. It is. It is. Now I say one thing that gets on my nerves when I used to be, uh, when I used to work at a studio and the kids would paint and they would just make a hot mess and everything was kind of gray and blue and red. And the parents are like, oh, it's just abstract. No, false. That's just a mess. Okay. Like that's just a piece of crap that your kid decided to do. <laughs> Don't <laughs> like there is so much more that goes into abstract painting um, than just splotching colors on. I know it's not for everybody. It's not really my preferred style, but when you kind of start understanding how it works and what the purpose is. It's just kind of disrespectful. And that's just because I'm, you know, I'm an artist. So I'm going to be sensitive about people uh, degrading my craft, you know, but um, it's like, it's not, that's not how it works. Just because it looks like crap does not make it, number one, does not make it art and does not make it. <laughs> True. Modern, this? Art. Wait, How's there this? you go. I can see that. Good. Yep. As long as we fill them in. Okay. Uh, so Kathy Skywalker says, used to draw many, many years ago just with pencils. Oh, yeah. I draw in color here. You can see that in my background. I've got some drawings going on that uh, I do sell. Oh. Etsy. But anyway. That reminds me. Uh, so this is this is my mouse pad that I have. I'll try to cover my name. This is from the first Scooby-Doo movie that I did oh. when I was nine. Or I don't remember how old I was. But you could clearly tell what that is <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> That's, no, that's not the one that my teacher yelled at me at. Right, right. Yeah. You can see if you look in there, the little barrel that they're in. You you remember the opening of that movie, kind of? Where there's, it's that ghost. It's been a while. It's been a, oh, okay. it's well, been a long time, man. <laughs> well, that one is probably the one I'm, I'm least embarrassed about. Well, that's good. Yeah. Let's see? Well, I so... We're gonna I, show, oh. I show that to you because I think you might I appreciate that. that. Of course. Okay. Um, let's see. So we're going to go into our uh, the pants here, and we're going to kind of uh, dip a little bit into black and brown. First, we're going to start off with brown, okay? And just go ahead and fill in the pants. Um, I know it seems like we could have just easily done that while we we're filling in the shoes, but there's a reason for the madness. We just carefully fill these in. And... Um, we're going to do with the pants kind of what we did with the background in that we're going to do a little bit of two-toning here and we're going to throw some color on here. We're going to be intentional about where we place it, but we're not going to overthink it because, again, there wouldn't be that much detail in these pants because of the fact that the light source is coming from behind. But we want, we want it to be more than just we put so much detail and blending into our background that we want to remain consistent through the rest of the painting. So we don't we don't want to just all of a sudden throw it out, like just block it out and say that's good enough and get lazy about it. No, it's, no sir, not on my watch. Nope. No laziness here. No cutting corners. <laughs> too much. Not too, exactly. There can be some corner cutting, just not too much. Yeah. See. Okay, and that's a different way because I was I was being an idiot. I was just padding it like I was with the background. I'm like, no, no. Uh, no, we want to do long. And my apologies that I did not say that. We want to do nice long strokes here so that way it fills the the section and it's very smooth. 
Uh, McKenna Draw says a lot goes more into abstract versus a mess, kind of like doing an abstract line work with intentional lines, but they're instead of just throwing it out all around over the place. Exactly. There, there's a thought that goes into it. Um, theme Park Casual, hello, says I'm a graphic designer. I have such respect for artists. I need a computer and command Z or I'm not doing <laughs> Yeah. I hear you. I also am a graphic designer, or at least I went to college for it and I do my own graphic designs and I do it for, um, if you don't know, if you're new here, I also do movie reviews on Inside the Booth and uh, I do the artwork for that channel as well. Just kind of all over the place with that. You enjoy making the thumbnails? I do, I, I really do. It's like one of my least favorite parts. So oh, so no, I, I enjoy it. Speaking of inside the booth, they wanted to say hi, but they can't stay long. So, so rewatch later. Yeah. Be sure to check us out on inside the booth. We do movie reviews and things like that. We're a, uh, every time I go onto one of your streams, I swear like something weird is taking place. Oh yeah. Like, we, I without fail. Yeah. We, we get off point a lot of times. So we always circle back and uh, we, we do finish the show. But uh, we, we have a lot of fun. We get sidetracked sometimes. Tomorrow, we're going to be reviewing a fan film of Scooby-Doo. Um, there's a new Ooh. series coming out made by YouTubers that looks phenomenal. And it's an hour-long episode. And they're going to be making more episodes. And uh, I think it might be crowdfunded, if I'm not mistaken. And... Uh, It'll be really cool. I can't wait to. Uh, I haven't watched it. I'm going to watch it tonight, and then we're reviewing it tomorrow. So check us out um, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Inside the Booth, where we're Dan and I will be discussing that. I am actually your... looking. I'm looking forward to that. And I, uh, if you wouldn't mind, send me that link so I can uh, uh, to okay. the video of uh, that fan film. I want to watch it. All right. It looks. Really I got really the cool. got the pants. You got the pants. Excellent. Uh, let me do, let me get Justin, keep going here before I respond to somebody else. So we're going to put some more brown on here and just a tiniest bit of black. I mean, just the tiniest bit of black. Cause you can always add more later on, like I always say, and we're just going to stroke up and down um, to create basically like these lines. Here we go. Let me just go do it a couple of times here, keeping the darkness more towards the center of the pant leg, because of course, that would be where it's the darkest, again, with the um, light source being behind. But just kind of throw a couple of streaks of black in here. And not too perfect. We don't want a perfect blend here because that makes it look like wrinkles in the fabric. It's just kind of like a cheap, easy way to detail something without wanting to do too many details. Especially if it is in the darkness. Uh, if you want to pay special attention to uh, shadowing the crotch, Justin, you can, as uh, R2 suggests. But, you know, that's I'm going to leave that up to you. So <laughs> it's a lot darker in the crotch area, but not like the, not for the reasons you think. <laughs> so, and just kind of stroke here and there. Found your channel via Arwen Avalon. I love Arwen. She's great. She was... <laughs> She was supposed to be on my channel last month, but she um, she was not able to. Something happened that morning, and she's like, I'm so sorry, but I'm not able to come. And I'm like, oh, we'll just reschedule. But she's also had her hands full with all those cats in the house. So got to get it. We were going to do the sorting hat. It's going to be Hasn't really cool. Been on before? Not on my channel. Oh, oh okay. Um, let's see, Tabitha, did, did you like Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I did. Um, you know, some of the stuff is a little bit cringe because you're like, oh my gosh, back in the day, I remember that hair, I remember that makeup, all that kind of stuff. But I thought it was a pretty cool show. Um, I never finished the series, but I think I got up to like season five or something like that, and I thought it was a really cool show. Um, I follow the gal who plays Daphne in those films on Instagram. Okay, so Joker's voice knows what I'm talking about. Derek uh, Hoim? I don't know how to pronounce your name. I, I apologize. Derek, anyone going to Star Wars Celebration this week? I'm going. I am not. 
I am not either. I already went in Chicago and that was good enough for me. Yeah, there you go. Satisfying. I, I was going to go because I used to live in Los Angeles, but um, so that would have been very convenient. But oh, well, now his crotch is a little lower. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Ah, no, I wasn't going to swear. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more. Okay, I'll stop. No, I won't. Oh no! <laughs> I, I, I think, I, I think. Yeah, don't I overthink it. That one. Don't overthink it. Just, just okay. you know. Don't overthink it. It'll All be right. okay. Uh, Alan, press play. He's here. Hello, Tabitha at work. Just wanted to stop by and say hello to you and your guests. Thank you so much, Alan. I appreciate it. Yeah, Justin is up hello. here. Um. Apparently squaring off Jason's crotch. <laughs> well, the pants just look very baggy at this point. Well, we'll just, we'll just. Does that look okay? Yeah, that looks like pants. Looks excellent. Again, yeah. it's not going to be the focal point. So that's one thing yes. to remember. As long as you make the mask look fantastic, nobody's going to worry about the drop pants there. Um, so. Okay. <laughs> so okay, we're we got that taken care of. We're gonna rinse our brush here, pat it dry, or rather squeeze out the excess uh, water here because we don't want that to leak onto the uh, canvas area. We're gonna go and do the shirt. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use uh, instead though we're gonna use blue. Basically fill all of this in, and then we're going to add a little bit of black to it um, in certain places to make it again look a little bit more realistic because the light source is coming from behind, but we don't want to lose all of the color there. So I'm just going to take some blue. I'll start what with the blue? sleeve. The uh, I'm just using the same blue that I used for my background. Everything's consistent. And that way it's less confusing. Okay. And just carefully go around all these edges. Well, I forgot the sleeve on the right hand, but I'm going to wing it. There, you, That's the spirit. Yeah. You see, building the confidence up. Mm -hmm. Feeling, yeah. I catch on. Takes me a couple hours, but I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> don't we all? Well, and then don't be afraid to use your um, stencil as a reference to kind of figure yeah. out where things need to go. Well, as you said, I'm not really going to focus on, on the body as much as I am the face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, nobody answered my question in the beginning of the stream. And now that we have some new people on, because I like to make this like Saturday morning cartoons, if you will, some wholesome vibes. We did start in the morning. It's now noon. Um, but nobody answered my question. What are some of your favorite cereals? I'm genuinely curious because sometimes people think of like the most ridiculous cereals. Maybe they grew up in a foreign country or something like that, and they have something that we don't. I didn't think that was a silly question. So if you guys have favorite cereals... Maybe like what you used to watch or eat when you would watch cartoons or or something like that. What would they be? Mine, I was saying, was probably be like Lucky Charms or really any kind of cereal that has marshmallows in it. I love them. Um, <laughs> and some people find them disgusting. I think they're great. I actually have a bag of them. My mom got them for me, I think, for Christmas. And uh, it's just a bag of the dehydrated marshmallows. And they're actually really great topping for ice cream. Just throwing it out there. And I also love Cinnamon Toast Crunch because it's a taste you can see. Uh, McKinney I Draws says like Captain Crunch and Crunch Berries, but for now it's Oatmeal Apple Cinnamon for me. Sounds good. Captain Crunch Peanut Butter. Freakies. Look it up. Oh, a cereal called Freakies. Interesting. Okay, see, see, you never know. Never know what people are going to say. Kathy Skywalker says I'm a serial killer. <laughs> Fate, well, we're going with what we're talking about. Uh, Joker says yeah, golden. Good question. Gosh, I, That's, I didn't recognize that. that. That was a good question. Was that intentional? Uh, what the the serial thing? No, it wasn't. Yeah. But it works out really well. <laughs> hey, it's Demachini. Oh my gosh! Thank you for joining Thanks, the stream. Good to see you. 
Kaboom was correct. Uh, he's he's awesome at Star Wars Celebration. Um, long time ago, we were the little channels, and everyone was like, "We're so jealous of you guys. You got to meet everybody." Um, really, it was just you know, just 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 meeting people. You know, we were a little a little awestruck, but hey. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Cocoa Puffs. Golden. I haven't had go -Go Golden Grams in a hot minute. Like it's been years. Apple Jacks. Oh my gosh. I remember the really cool suave commercials they had with the teenagers that were eating Apple Jacks and they were like gathered at the skate park. And <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, I remember those. Oh my gosh. So I was funny. just like, really? Really? They're, they're skating over cereal? Okay. I mean, yeah, I exactly. Usually... They would jump over the boxes and do cool kick flips and stuff like that. It was great. Great. What a great time to be alive. Uh, Count Chocula. That's a good one, too. Never had Count Chocula. <gasps> I had Cocoa stuff. Puffs. I mean, it's essentially like Cocoa Puffs, but in my opinion, it's better because I think it also comes with little marshmallows. So, <laughs> oh, look, yeah. George Lucas in the chat. George Lucas. Hey, George. Six Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know how far along you've come with your um, your shirt here. Is it almost done? Yep. Cool. Dimash and I, y'all making me want cereal. Yeah, you know what? I honestly want some cereal. I had eggs for breakfast, but now I'm like, cereal would be great. It would just It's a good snack, man. Like, you can eat cereal all throughout the day. So we have a very bright shirt and a very dark setting, so we're going to want to fix that. So I'm going to take very little of my black paint. Like I said, always very little. And I think it best to start in the chest area here because it's more surface area and we'll get accustomed to how to use it for over here. Like I said, we want the edges to be a little bit brighter than the center, but I'm just going to quickly stroke up like this. You can see how dark it is now. Yours is very, very bright. Uh, mine is already yeah. just a dark. Okay. Uh, well, it, I mean, for me, it's like a kind of a dark blue. So I don't know if I have to do too much. Yeah. Yeah. I that's think what I would I just very... it up. Rogue, you're still stuck in traffic. Oh, my gosh. Well. I hope you have the music jamming and the windows down. It, a lot of the detail on my painting, I notice, is getting lost in the camera, which kind of sucks. Um, so hopefully that's not misleading to you. You know but, what? I, I started doing the black and I already regret it. Oh. I'm just going to paint over it. Yeah, you let it dry and then you can... Uh, Just take our time here and just kind of go with it. Yeah, my blue is quite bright. Um, it's very vibrant. But this is why I kind of downplay it, you know, with the black as we introduce it, because you can add the layers to it, kind of adjust as needed. You know what? I've accepted mine as a different style. Yours is more very much, uh, you know, detailed. Mine has like a little, like, bit of a, you can't really oh, see on. it too well, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, just a different faded outline, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, it could almost, what kind of reminds me, like, maybe of a G dream sequence. It's a little fuzzy on yeah. the edges. So mm -hmm. it could be like a, so, or, or a nightmare, rather. <laughs> yeah, my dreams are always kind of fuzzy, except for a few. There you I, go. I don't think I told you this. I once had a dream uh, that I was talking on a park bench with Jesus. You told me you were going to save that story for today. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, now's the time since we're talking about dreams. That just kind of worked itself in there, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know how, how your dreams are like, but mine are all over the place. Oh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but somehow I ended up on a park bench talking to Jesus, who was played by Seth Rogen for whatever reason. <laughs> And it was very weird. He was talking like him. He was, he had like the laugh, like, <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't know. We just talked about life and he talked about daddy issues and stuff and how okay. like <laughs> he had daddy showed his issues. hands and okay. stuff. Uh, but we, I don't know. He, he said, he yeah. told me the meaning of life, uh, but then used that men in black thing to zap my memory. Um, it was, it was wow. kind of like, it's kind of a joking kind of thing, but then he's, he 
basically I, I got the verbal, the nonverbal cue that he had to leave. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, and I, and I said, the, Jesus yeah, is polite I, like that, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. He didn't just straight up, Hey, I got to go. But, um, uh, I just said, Hey, uh, you know, I just want to know, like, is this, is, is, is this actually happening? Is this real? And he says, it's as real as you make it. And then I wake up. Oh, kind of, kind of nice, huh? Yeah. I don't know if that's as interesting as I let it to be, but. No, I think it is. I love hearing people's dreams. Yeah. Do you have any like dreams that, that you remember either fondly or not so much? Oh yes. All the time. I can remember the dreams, the nightmares that I had when I was a child. Um, because they were reoccurring. So really quickly, I'm just showing you here now. I have downplayed my black significantly. You'll mm -hmm. notice that it's quite dark and that's good. And I did leave some edges a little bit more bright because again, light source shining through and everything like that. And I don't want all the color to be totally dismissed, but, um, and then I left the collar section a little bit brighter um, just because, you know, to, to distinguish it and everything like that. But uh, when you get the blue done and I'll tell you my dream in just a second, when you get the blue done, I'm going to um, retire this brush here and put it in my water. We're going to move on to our detail brushes because it's going to start okay. getting the nitty, the, the nitty gritty here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to move on to the biggest detail brush that I have, which is the number two, because I want to save the number one for the face mask. Um, okay. for the details of the face mask. And what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to start off with the mask first. Now, don't get nervous. I know that this is like the main portion of the painting. So, um, <laughs> you know, all that. But I'm going to move this camera off stream for a second so I can adjust this to bring it in closer. And I don't want that to look weird. So carry on with what you're doing for a second. What was the number two? Because this is a flat brush and clearly not the right one. Okay. Uh, detail brushes, teeny tiny mm -hmm. detail brushes. Yeah. If you, okay, or if you, one. there you go. Let me see if I can readjust this camera. To move so number one and a number three, the number three has a little bit of a shorter edge to the brush as opposed mm -hmm. to this one. So should I use the longer one? I have a couple more. Um, yeah. Shorter tips are fine because you have better control over that. Let me see if this. I might need to reposition my... That one's probably good. Let me lift the tape here. I actually have my canvas tape. It's because I'm using watercolor paper. I'm actually... Let me relocate that real quick so that we can see that. Let me see if this Am is Am I doing better. all right so far? I think so. I think you're doing fantastically. Better there than expected than, or that I let on? Oh, I knew you were going to do fine. Everybody always has this weird fear. It's like, look, if you're here to have fun and try to learn something new, then we've already had, we've already accomplished the mission. So hopefully this is close enough for you. The arm can only do so much. I really think I need to invest in a new arm. And if you support me on Patreon, that's probably the first <laughs> product I'll buy. <laughs> So anyway, what we're going to do with the face, let me bring this original in here. We're going to, like I said, focus a lot of the details. Let me do this here on the face. You'll notice that it's white, but on the edges closer to the side there, mm -hmm. um, there's a little yeah. bit of darkness there, right? Because again, we don't want to just be bland. We don't want this just to be a white face. There's going to be some shadowing even in the real world, right? So we're going to paint this whole thing white. And then mm -hmm. we're going to take take our brush and just take very little black paint to make gray and just kind of add a wee bit of a shadow over here on the side. And we'll want that to be perfectly dry and untainted by any color, which is why we're doing the mask first. So then we can do the details and we'll move on to everything else. So go ahead and take this brush. Okay. And uh, take a little bit of white, not too much. That way you have some control over, let me fix this here. And if you want really good control over a detail brush, be sure to hold it really close to the metal so it's rep reminiscent mm -hmm. of a um, pen or a pencil. And we're just going to do some simple streaks here. Put the paint down. Try to cover up that line that your pen may have made. Uh, let's see. Dimaginai says, I had a dream as a child that I remember to this day. It was a 
me in something of a G-Force team, old school anime, but it felt super real. Um, that would be cool. My dreams, I always thought it would be neat to have somebody professionally interpret my dreams because they were reoccurring. So it's like, it, obviously it meant something. But my dreams, the one that I always had, um, had to do with my family. So I had my brother, my mom, and my dad. Ooh. And I were basically... Maybe because I watched a lot of Scooby-Doo, but the dream took place as if it was on a flat surface, almost like hieroglyphics, like those ancient Egyptian drawings. Like my family was not three dimensional. We were like flat on the surface. And there was like this brownish gray black uh, background. And it was all quiet in the dream. And we we're basically looking back and forth as a family. And all of a sudden it the dream switches scenes and this loud, creepy rumbling erupts. And there are these clouds, uh, these grayish brown clouds filled with spikes that are constantly rumbling and moving within themselves, racing towards us. And then the dream would switch to my family and then it would switch to the rumbling clouds again. And then slowly but surely the rumbling clouds were getting closer to my family and then before they actually came and hit the family um i would wake up and i had that dream all the time as a child so i'm gonna, I'm gonna use a different brush that uh that one is not uh not as not pretty. working yeah. yeah you know what you know i of course will suggest to you what brushes you need to use but if you need to adjust accordingly that's absolutely fine Rob's rules. Hey, hey, Rob, how you doing? Speed racer, dude. Hello, I was Rob. down for some speed racer for sure. You know, I also had recurring nightmares. Hmm. Yeah. I I would. It, it was only one. I would wake up. I would. I would get a bowl of cereal, cinnamon toast crunch. Ah. And uh, all of a sudden. You know, all th this whole chorus line of people would would burst into my house and start <laughs> singing like a musical, oh my gosh. like people would do. And I'm just sitting there perplexed, like, what is going on? <laughs> like, people are synchronized swimming in my bathtub. Uh, for some reason, they're tearing apart the place, dancing and doing all this choreography. Um, and then I, I uh, after the end of this epic epic song that's like one of the most beautiful songs you've ever heard it's like an epic opening song and i i mean think of like beauty and the beast except better obviously uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um uh and then i'm just like what the what the heck was that and then uh, and i take a bite of my cereal i'm like oh man it's soggy and so <laughs> I go about my day. I go to the drive-through of Tim Hortons, and then everyone is you singing again about coffee, and it's just ridiculous. And then the whole day, whole day, everyone sings different songs about what I'm doing during my day. And at, okay. at the end of it, I'm trying to go to sleep, and they're talking, they're, they're singing very loudly about sleep, and <laughs> singing loudly about. Sleep. And I'm just like, "Will you guys stop singing?" And then they just all stop quiet and one of the chorus member just walks up to me slaps me in the face and then they keep going and that was it that's all that happened and uh yeah wow. so I, I i that's part of the reason why i despise musicals is okay the suspension How interesting of yeah yeah but also uh it i finally they finally stopped when i figured out the problem um i was uh, traumatized at this Broadway camp. Broadway <laughs> camp. Yes, yes. So I was in theater, and my grandparents were like, "Hey, they're, the Lion King showing in Cleveland, uh, the play out of Square. Um, they're gonna show you behind the scenes." I'm like, "Cool." Two days before I go, I get sheet music for vocal placements, and I'm like, oh. "What vocal play? No, no." And it's like it's like for aspiring theater actors who want to be in musicals. And so okay. I couldn't read music. And so uh, I had a guy uh, who I was talking to was like, oh, uh, this one I'm going to do. They only give us three options. I'm like, you can do this first. You can so do I, it. <laughs> yeah, so I can try to memorize the song. That's the only way I can really do that. I listen. I learn by ear, not by reading. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So, and I completely butcher it. And at that point, I just say to everybody, like, I can't read music. <laughs> and I have avoided singing the entire the rest of the week. And it, it was very embarrassing. So once I figured that out, I kind of gauged that. And, you know, I, I have accept, I have found musicals that I enjoy, like singing in the rain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. That was a fun little, fun little story time. It is pretty interesting. It just, I have no fear of clouds, by the way. So I, I have, it didn't what? affect me that way. I'm just saying with my dream. So, um, yeah. Oh, but okay. so with the mask, so I don't know if you've painted it all white. I'm going to go ahead and show you yes. what we're going to do for the, the shadowing. So I'm going to put another layer of white already on here and then get very, very little black paint. Very, very little and just streak a little bit down the side of the face here. That's probably too much. So I'm going to pat out the excess on my towel, get a little bit more white, and then just do some gentle strokes like so to really soften this. And it's still too much, so I pat it out, get more white. It's gonna be a lot of back and forth here. We want some subtlety with this. You might have to go back and forth a couple of times. So we don't want oh, this to be too dark. Yeah, you can always take a little bit of water, water it down. I've done that. Sometimes the paint starts congealing. And just gently work it back into the, the middle of the face. Yeah, let's go back to this one. Yeah, bounce back and forth as needed. There we go. Just do some gentle strokes there. You can see how it's gradually getting lighter as I get to the center here. Rob says his nightmare is having to go to work every day. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you love what you do, but even if you love what you do, it can still be tedious sometimes. This is actually starting to look more like Michael Myers now. That's it. Okay. Well, we, we haven't put the details of the mask on, so maybe that will help, you know, keep it in check. <laughs> okay. At least we'll still be in the horror genre. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So kind of imagine you're painting the moon, if you will. One side darker than the other. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to soften this up a little bit. Take your time here. The great thing is it's just black and white. So you can always, if you will, erase it by um, letting it dry a little bit and painting over it, adding some more white to it. Just kind of bounce back and forth. Blending is my favorite thing to do. So take your time. Jason Myers. Yes, right. We could change this into Jason Myers. <laughs> No fretting. It's all going to be good. I know that the mask is going to be the hardest part, but that's okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, see, this is where the happy accidents are going mm -hmm. to occur inevitably. No, it's all good. Okay. We just basically uh, want... I, I keep mixing in. I only have a little bit of white left. I keep mixing in too much of the black. So now yes. This is this is something that we learn as we go along. I told you in the beginning, like, earlier on that you know a lot of this has to be with uh, learning about placement of our items, uh, how much. It's also about how much pressure to apply and how much paint to use. And so this is not uncommon for people who are unfamiliar with painting. We we tend to use a lot more than we realize. And it's not only it's not until we start painting more that we start realizing wow it does not take a lot to change the outcome of something. Um, oh so yeah, because look at the, look at this face. Look at this face. The black kind of mixed in. <laughs> hey, but it's kind of cool because it matches your background like with a little bit of that fuzziness to it. So at least okay. everything is consistent with itself. Yes. 
Uh, Rob says he has another kind of nightmare. Um, it's about this show that's on every Thursday called This Week in, in BS. Um, he's like this annoying guy named Proper Justin or something like that. He's the host. <laughs> okay. Well, Jason's mask is going to be just a little bit more dirty, less white. There you go. And while, and that's, so here's the other thing too, that's not necessarily wrong if it's darker because of the fact that again, he is in the shadows. It's probably more realistic. I just have the face highlighted more so that you can see it, but it doesn't make it wrong. It might make it actually a little bit more uh, accurate, realistic. Yeah. Hold on. Try to get close up. So it doesn't look yeah. bad here because of the lighting, but I can tell all of the, all the black. Yeah. And that's the hard part about being, uh, you know, a creative or an artist. You know, you are the one who can see where everything kind of went askew, went a little bit wonky. But that's all right. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm gonna go rinse out my hands again. Real quick, <laughs> it's getting pretty dirty. Yeah, well, I mean, so are mine, but you know, you just kind of go with the flow. <laughs> but uh, hope everybody's having a great day. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I know it's kind of a long stream, but painting does take a long time. If you're interested in um, other streams like this, I have done a few others um, where I painted uh, a Snoopy for Easter time. It was just me. Um, I was expecting to have somebody else with me, but they weren't able to attend. So I just just hung out with you guys and chatted. And then I've also had Phil TMNT on my channel and I've had comics and cosmetics on my channel. I'm gonna, I already have a lineup of other YouTubers that are gonna be on my channel next month. So um, I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to show you the newest painting that I've done, but I kind of need to keep it uh, a secret for right now, um, which is really hard. But if you follow me on Instagram, you will be able to see some of the behind the scenes footage that I have, as well as sometimes on Twitter, pretty much everything that I have. Um, you can kind of follow along and, and I, I, I sometimes I'm not consistent. Like I'll post a story on Instagram, but I didn't post it on Twitter. So it's kind of like bouncing back and forth. I apologize, but uh, yeah, I've got some really cool stuff. I might actually release a snippet of what I will be teaching the YouTuber next month. Um, because I'm just too freaking excited about it. It's going to be a blast. So oh, yeah. are you are you done with uh, your mask? Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. Done with the white. Yeah. We so going. we're going to move on. Sorry for that loud noise. My tape is stuck here. I would peel it off, but I like to keep it for a grand reveal at the end. So I'm going to move on to the sword over here. The machete. And, <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the machete. <laughs> You're right. So what we're going to do is kind of with the face mask, but in the opposite, right? And we are going to do um, black and then streaks of white throughout, right? So just go ahead and take that same brush, get some black on it, and do some quick streaks down the side like so. And basically just fill this whole thing up with black. And then we'll start adding the white later on, and I'll show you a little technique to make it look like it's shiny, like it's reflecting the light. When you say a little bit, I literally just dab it a little bit in the, mm -hmm. in the. Well, we're not mixing colors at the moment. So the, I mean, you know, you can just, yeah, spread the black out. It's all good. I am also, if anybody's curious, I am actually uh, an art teacher online on a platform form called Out School, where I teach children between the ages of nine and uh, 14 how to paint. I've got all kinds of classes there. Um, I teach them how to paint baby Grogu, dragons, ocean scenes, Snoopy, <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff. a great platform you can learn anything there as long as you're in school but yeah we're just going to paint the machete let me get it right the first this next time here just let me make this a little bit more defined there we go we're almost done here jane uh Justin, we just Jason now. I know, I know, it's terrible. Justin and Jason, they're so similar, and it's just like, uh. so. Okay. 
So we, we have it all filled up with black. So what we're going to do is leave that uh, black on our paintbrush. I'm going to take a little bit of white here. Let me see if you can see mm. it. Happy leave accident it. with the edge of the machete. It's a lot thicker than I thought it was, but oh well. Well, you it's could fine. always, well, you can always kind of cover it up with the blood when we get there. So yeah, okay. Works out. So we're going to take our paintbrush. I'm going to hold it at an angle like so. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we're going to just streak up this way a couple of times. I don't know if you can see that the camera. I need to get better light over here. So just streak up a couple of times. And of course, that doesn't look very good. But we just kind of wear it out and drag it. We don't necessarily need it perfect. The straighter the line, the better. But it doesn't have to be perfect. It just basically makes it look like it has a shine to it, has an edge to it. You know, we're basically creating dark gray with some white here. Okay. Someone vacuuming in the background. No, that's my computer's engine uh, revving okay. up. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, no, it's fine. I was just curious. It's, yeah, it's pretty loud. It's I might need to get a new one. It's kind of old. Start a GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah. Now, everybody's going to, uh, of course, have different shine on theirs. Mm. But as long as, again, it looks like what we're going for gets the point across, it's all good. We don't want to overdo it with the gray and the white. Just a little bit of shine here. Let me show you right here. Okay. I just realized my brushes are a lot thicker than yours, so that's why it looks completely different. <laughs> oh, hang on. Yeah. There we go. It looks good, though. I think it, you can tell that like, pretty much who this is, even though the face is still blank. I think anybody with a little bit of knowledge would be able to quickly figure out who this is and definitely what it is we're, we're doing. Like, we're doing a guy with a machete sword, you know. <laughs> machete sword. A machete sword. So we've got that taken care of. I'm going to take a little bit more black and do the handle on the back here. You can see that little gap between his fist. Just going to paint the hilt. Be very careful with this. Okay. okay. Whenever we get done with that, we're going to yeah. clean our brush wipe it dry or pat it, like twirl it. It'd be helpful to twirl it on our towel like so because that helps keep it nice and pointy. And uh, we're going to then dip it into our brown again. And we're going to, I did a lot of research to try to figure out what his skin tone was, but I'm like, again, the whole purpose is like the background in his mask. So I'm just gonna go into brown with a little bit of the red because we need our, our machete to dry before we put the blood on. So a little bit of brown and a little bit of red mixed together. A, little, a lot more brown than red, according to the picture that I had on the, the online. And we're just going to go ahead and fill in his hands, both of them, and the portion of his neck. Okay. So pretty simple. But this way, um, even though it's pretty similar to the color that we have in our pants, the pants are not just brown, they are black and brown. And then our hands are not just brown, but they're red and brown. So there's going to be slight differences here that will help separate everything. Okay. Sounds like you have a trash man or something outside of your place. Oh yeah, there's always trash outside. <laughs> honorable trash? Uh, no, dishonorable. Dishonorable trash. So, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, Seen a lot of interesting things happen. I live across the street from a gas station, so you can imagine what kind of things happen. Mm. You don't need TV. Just watch the mm. window. Oh, oh yeah. That that is very true. 
We used to, I used to do that with our neighbors when I lived, um, we lived up in DC and uh, the couple across the street would have like arguing fights outside and like he would be driving. He, he had this tiny, we lived in the suburbs and he had this tiny yard, but he bought himself a tractor, like one of those riding mowers and uh, just was a happy little camper. And sometimes he would be sitting out there and his wife would come out and start yelling at him like, Bob, Bob. And he'd be like, what? And so he didn't even turn off the, the engine the motor he would just sit uh, sit there and yell he and his wife would have yelling fits about whatever needed to be done it was just like we just sit on the stairs kind of watch be like what's going on be like they're I'm fighting again people watching, <laughs> people watching is is very yeah. fun there we go getting down to the nitty-gritty And so all of this is really helping to prepare us for the real details that come in the face, right? Because um, we're going to be switching over to a smaller brush if we can and yeah. really taking our time with the last details that are to come. This helps familiarize uh, ourselves with the use of the detail brush, how much color to use, how much pressure to apply. Very, very helpful, very beneficial. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of quiet, so I'm just going to go play this. Little Not piece. only do I spend the rest of the video feeling like an idiot, I also spend the rest of the video looking like an idiot, and you're not going to be able to unnotice it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. kind of how I felt about the paint on my hands. I'm like, oh, it's there. All right. So there we go. It the hand yep. looks great. Oh, cool. thanks. At least, uh, at least on the on the right hand side or left well the other yeah. one's just meant to be kind of the impression of it mine's like that too don't forget to do the neck no okay yeah okay all right and then That's we're that. going to uh, rinse the brush out whenever you get that taken care of okay and pat it dry and by this time our machete will hopefully be somewhat dry you can be as liberal with the blood as you would like to be, Justin. Um, <laughs> I recommend less being more here, but, you know, to each their own. Let me shift this over here a little bit. So I'm going to take my crimson, my red, and just kind of streak it down the side. Okay, what's the shortest one? That one looks like the shortest one. I apologize that it's kind of dark, but here we go. I need to get a different light source on there. And you can kind of make it a little bit jagged because you don't necessarily want it to be like it's been dipped in blood, but more like it's just kind of splattered on there. That's an interesting story, Rob. My goodness. You just never know what people are going to say. Okay. And then what I like to do for a little added something, something are the blood drops. Just kind of collecting on the edge there. Just kind of gently. This is what makes it the most sinister. And sometimes, like I said, less is more. It's sometimes just having a little bit what really sells the story. Mm. Right on that. I put too many droplets, but... Yeah, is it really it? too many when you massacred a family, you know? Yeah. Ah, there we go. Yep. Sells the story yep. and it takes away that bit of color. It takes away um, from the largeness of the tip of the, the machete. So yep. it just kind of looks like it's collecting there. So here mm -hmm. we go. Let me 
Use the spoon. Gonna rinse that brush out. I don't personally, since we're coming down to the end of this, I personally don't like leaving my detail brushes to rest in the water because it damages the tip. So what I do is leave it full of water. Like it, it actually has quite, you can see there's a drop forming there. And I just set it on my towel. So that way if there's any paint in there, it won't harden and leave it to to finish off um, later oh. on. Oh, okay. Because those brushes have been in there since... Oh, okay. Well, you know, that's just something you learn as you go along. It's a preference. Some people leave them in the water. I personally don't like to. So let me get this a little closer. All right. Here. Another rinsing time real quick. <laughs> Jason, Jason, not my cup of tea, but the paintings are looking great. Thank you. Yeah. Jason is not my cup of tea either, but, um, it's fun to do all the paintings. And uh, like I said, so here um, on the stream, I give the YouTubers, I'll reach out to certain YouTubers and just say, hey, I do this stream. Would you be interested in painting with me? I give you all the liberty to choose what the subject is, as long as it's not something indecent. Um, <laughs> and I will make up a mock painting, send it to the YouTuber and say, would you be interested in painting this? And then I tell them when they say yes, what the supplies are that they need. And we have a good time. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah something different. I don't know any other person that does that. So it keeps it different. Hey, Kelly girl. Hello. Good to see you. Hope that you're doing okay with your move and everything. Uh, so now is the time for the face mask. I'm going to get this really close here. So, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of little details here and coming down to the end of it, we'll definitely want to pay close attention here. Um, don't fret. Don't get upset if something doesn't turn out right, because remember, we can always let it dry and cover it up with white later on, some of the gray. But we're going to start okay. off with um, the nose, because that's easier. It's like the center, if you will, of the face, and it helps us know where to put everything else. So taking the smallest deep tail brush, making sure it stays nice and pointy. I'm going to get just a tiny touch of black. Tiny, tiny. And I'm going to shift things around. Where's, I think I lost Jason's head. Here we go. Let me just shift this around. I'm going to put this near here so I can Run use it as a, ref, as a guide. Come over here and just kind of gauge it. And we're just going to make kind of this little upside down pyramid. Try not to make it too big. Because you can always make it bigger. Ah, that's the scariest part. Hey, stunning and brave Megatron. Good to see you. Okay. I got a little dot there. Okay. Kind of like upside down triangle thing there. So this would help us to know that, of course, we need two eyes. And they're above the nose and out to the side. So we just kind of do some slightly bigger triangles. Doing some triangles with the eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Try not to make them too serious a triangle. It's just kind of like a general guide for the shape that we're going for. It's just what it looked like kind of online or made it easier to, to look. I just want to make sure I don't make them look too much like a panda. But that's what the red... <laughs> It's what mine is looking like. Uh-huh. No, I mean, look at mine. Mine totally looks like a panda right now. But trust the process. It'll come to fruition once all the details are on here. <laughs> We're turning into a killer, cuddly panda over here. It's giving me so. ideas. I'm going to have to start writing. Oh, my gosh. Killer, cuddly panda. Panda suit Mary, for people who remember. Um. There were, that's an inside joke. Okay. <laughs> well, after let me, it. Um, whenever you're done with the eyes and the nose, let me know. I don't want to move too quickly. Okay. Well, these are more like circles, but that'll do. Oh, but that works fine. Once we okay. get the dots and the, the red on there, oh, yeah, it all comes together. It looks ridiculous in the beginning, but it'll work. All right. So then we're going to move to the top of the head at a slight angle. We're going to make the, I guess it's the bands for the the thing on his head to keep the mask on there. We'll just do kind of like angled rectangles, basically. 
<laughs> Kung Fu Panda, the R-rated version. <laughs> exactly. So we do one at the top. Like I said, it's slightly angled because his head is tilted a little bit. And we'll do the yeah, same all thing. All these brushes are really a little too long. There's not one that's like not too. That's okay. All you do is just like you can always rest your hand against the painting so that you um, have a little bit better control. And then I'm going to line up. Again, use your um, stencil as a reference if you need help with locating the... Um, there, there's his head. I'm going to put that hovering over here. Now, this isn't very good with straight lines at all, as I have discovered. <laughs> well, fortunately, we don't want it to be too straight anyway, because it kind of helps with the grunge factor. Sometimes having it not bold makes it more realistic anyway. And then I'll just put a little one on the other side because we don't want to see too much of it. Always a little different from each time. Oh, crap. This looks like another eye now. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, oh, it doesn't. Okay. No, it doesn't. Okay. It looks good. Okay. Okay. Know. You're good. You're good. In fact, I think I need to add a little bit more of a point to my mask because I noticed that yours is more pointy and that makes sense. And so is the one in the reference. Mine is way too round. It really does look like a panda. Let me fix that and then we'll carry on. There we go. Like That's an evil bit. panda. Yeah, I really, mine was looking more like an evil panda than yours. All right. So then we're going to start doing the dots and that is going to take a little bit of time. Be very careful with that. I mean, it's just black. And uh, you can use, again, the stencil to kind of see where we're going. Make sure you leave space for the red markings. I like to start, like, in the middle of the face up here towards the, the eyes. And just, just very lightly, very slowly start adding the dots according to the pattern that's on his helmet. Starting to get hungry, man. Hungry, hungry hippos. Well, good thing we're almost done. Yeah. Once we finish off with Jason, all we have to do is fill in the gap on the bottom so he's not just hovering in the ether and call it a day. Yeah. What do you usually do on a Saturday that takes your time, J uh, Justin? Just again, Jason. Um, I was going to. I stopped myself to see that. Um, I'll usually catch up on some movies or TV shows, and then I go into work later today. Um, okay. That's a little, a little boring, but uh, you know, uh, I, I just catch up on what everybody is up to and what everyone's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and try to see what everyone is talking about. Um, so that you have another good week for BS on Thursday. <laughs> oh, absolutely. What what started that, if I might ask? What started the weekly news update of The Ridiculous? Um, I just needed a weekly show while I was first starting out. And uh, there was one week in particular where uh, just so much stupid had happened. And I was <laughs> like, you know what? This week in BS, pretty much everything. Um, yeah. Mary was on. If you remember, Kester, he was on as well. I think he was on when you were on, right? Uh, yeah, he was one of the panelists. Okay. Um, but uh, it, it just... It just started off with one week with a lot of ridiculous stuff. And I was just like, well, at the time, because you were, I don't know if you recall, I was uh, a, I was under a different name. Mm. Uh, so, and I only had a monthly stream and that's it. And I'm like, that's not enough to grow my channel. And I, yeah. I need more streams, more watch time. So I kind of created that. And then Mary suggested, uh, you know what, if you're going to do something like that, call like do this week in BS again. Uh, and I was All like, right. well, that's probably a good idea. And so I've been doing that for the last, uh, I mean, it's coming on, I think, three years now. Oh, 
okay. uh, doing do, doing the show most most on Thursdays, uh, most Thursdays. So it's just one of those things where it's kind of like now an outlet to get my uh, uh, just just the whole the whole goal is just to just have people just laugh really yeah. and just have a yeah. good time. We do. Really I think like my favorite time. my favorite article that you've ever read was the one where the uh, the one badminton team was disappointed in the Chinese badminton team and Blaise basically tattletailed to the ref and complained that they felt they weren't playing their best. Yes. They, my they were favorite. guilty of not playing seriously. You read the yeah. rest of the article? I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I should have read the rest on air because it was like, it was, good. It was, was it even more ridiculous once you read the details? I mean, from start to finish, I was not disappointed. Let me put it that way. <laughs> um, do you have all the black dots on your face? Yeah, it looks very strange. Um, oh, but it looks good. Terrible. I think I like your dots better than my dots. Oh, it's really? Good. Yeah. Okay. I think I definitely think yours has more of the dream aspect because of the, mm -hmm. the wiggly lines and stuff. So I think that's actually really cool. It is almost like you are painting an actual visual representation of a nightmare. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that actually you. works really well with today's theme. So see, you just never know, you never know. All right, so now's the time to add the red. I'm going to take just, I'm gonna clean my brush, of course, dry it off, get some red, and then very carefully paint in the specific places where the little, red pieces need to go like this one goes in between well a little bit above and between the eyes do you want okay. to do the same one as uh as the red before the blood yeah we're using the same colors we're not shifting anything okay <laughs> mine start to look like it has a unibrow <laughs> you know that is the humbling thing about streams like this like i i will admit i'm a pretty good artist right but when you paint in front of people and uh it doesn't turn out exactly like the first time. It's like, oh my gosh. But I have to remind myself, it's not about me. This is about you painting something nice. And uh, I just let the rest of my artwork have to speak for itself. <laughs> because in comparison, it's not quite the same. I feel like I have a clown panda, but that's okay. It's all right. It's fun. Well, it's one of those things where I'm kind of, I'm, I'm glad to have done this as well. Just Good. because uh, I'm, as I was saying earlier, uh, I am not, this is not my cup of tea at all. <laughs> it's extraordinarily uncomfortable. But you are also, you also stepping out of your comfort zone is, uh, I don't know, it's just really nice. And, you know, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm glad I'm not, I'm not alone in this, in this slight discomfort of, <laughs> I'm right, you are not alone. Right, yeah. I'm gonna shift this camera again. This is the tricky part. Yep, I'm take your time. This, this this brush does not do well with triangles. <laughs> you just all. have to learn how to manipulate it. That's again takes practice, takes uh, muscle growth, you know, in the wrists and the hands. People don't think about the fact that artists they tend not to be a very muscular group of people because all depending on what medium you're using, all of our muscles are just here. It's it's muscles. Who's I telling yesterday? They're muscles for precision, not muscles for power. Right? There's a difference. So you know, it does not help that I'm kind of shaky. Oh yeah, absolutely. And again, that has to do with with building up the muscles and developing them in your hands, your fingers, your wrists, all that stuff. Um, so if you would do more of this, because even with guitar, you have a lot more pressure um, that you're oh, applying yeah. to the strings and everything. So that's a whole nother kind of development for the muscles. This is much different. Like I said, it's not for muscles for, for strength, it's muscles for precision. Let me know when yeah. you're done with the red and we'll move on to the final portion of today's painting. Okay. Well, this is, uh, okay. Oh. So this is when I said the triangles are not working at all. But it looks good. 
good. No, I like that. I do. I like your yeah, face. No. The the no. character looks better than mine, I think. Being honest. TBH. So you oh, remember I said yeah, we we're going to return. I'm, and I'm not flattering you. Like, I don't do that here. Like, I'm all about honesty. So I mean it when I say it. <laughs> well, thank you. So I'm going to return back to my half, or excuse me, my one-inch flat brush. Going to get out all the water and everything like that, according to the shape of the brush. I see people are saying, good job, Justin. Oh, thank it's you. So your painting is a little different than mine. Your Jason is closer towards the bottom. So you're going to want to um, a kind of arrange this and judge this as best as you can for yourself, which is great. So you see here in my original painting, he's up a little bit higher. And I have this foliage basically in the foreground, kind of hiding some of his boots and stuff. I don't think you have as much space, but the process is going to be the same as we did before with our background with that padding motion. We're going to start off with green and build into black. Okay, and just kind of, I okay. kind of come at an angle for mine. You don't necessarily need to do that, but I'm just going to go ahead and get some green and uh, start small. I'm just going to, I want to make sure I kind of cover some of his feet so it doesn't look like he's standing on nothing. And uh, Celebrity Jeremy says, I feel good when my stick, your stick figures look like stick figures. Exactly. Yes, for sure. Here we go. And it's okay if you cover up some of his shoes, kind of make the ground, you know, ground is uneven. So it's okay. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of basically make a hill for him to stand on. And then he will die on that hill. You're right. He's defeated. One day. <laughs> Still hasn't happened yet, but... We can all dream, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Switching hands and just dab. Take doesn't have to take too much time because it's not again. It's not really about precision. It's about color placement and the technique. Okay. Just a kind of little hill for him to stand on. If you paint over his feet, he will be defeated. Ha. Ha. Who said that? Oh, Celebrity Jeremy. Oh. Yeah, he was on my first stream uh, way back when. Back in the day. During the Council of Jeremy's Day. Oh, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, pro I probably told you that a couple of times. But yeah, I just started off as a joke account and people are like, you're funny. You should you should do this. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, OK, no aspirations of ever doing this at all. But <laughs> here we are. Here we are. You never know. I didn't intend to become a YouTuber, but here we are. I didn't intend to be on a podcast, but here I am. So, oh, all right, yeah. I've got my green laid out and I'm going to keep green on my brush. Add just a wee bit of black and kind of work Is from the corner right? up. Is this OK? So that... What? Oh, it's okay. On. Yes, exactly. So that my art teacher, my drawing teacher, she always said, make sure that you don't just leave people hanging out, levitating, unless they're supposed to be levitating. So yeah, putting some ground underneath. Absolutely. And we're just going to bring back that darkness here, merging my green and the black to help frame it in. I need a little bit more green. If the green will... <laughs> Allow me to use it. There we go. Running out of green. Got to make some more. We'll do that later. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of darkness back here. Coming down to the end of it. Just kind of putting those final touches. Some framework back up in here just because I think it needs it. Okay. There we go. Yes. Tabs is very happy with that. 
His face, not so much, but that's all right. Oh, that's okay. Exactly. Not like mine's much better, but it okay. is. It is much better, but that's okay. Well, that that is actually really sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> not being sweet, just being honest. <laughs> Well, I think it's nice. Um, yeah, definitely a much better experience than I had in school, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, and obviously you're an adult now, so you can better process what people are saying and comprehend. That's the thing, too. Like, comprehension. People need to remember that, you know, when you're in school and everything like that, uh, not everybody's comprehension skills have fully developed. And so while it might seem easy to some people, it's not going to be easy to others. Some people have a hard time understanding artwork. It's, it's just like math. You got to kind of figure it out. It's not for everybody, but when you get your ground all finished and you like the way that looks, I'm going to put a little bit more edge and darkness over here. We're going to put our brush into our cup of water and retire it because we will be finished with our painting. And I'm going to do a grand reveal by peeling off the tape on my painting here. You had tape on it? Like. I oh, did because I, on the outside, yeah. Just, just, oh, I should have done that. Well, I was going to tell you that, but you said something about framing it. And I'm like, ah, that's all right. But this just helps, you know, keep it grounded. Uh-oh, I tore a little bit of it. That's all right. We'll paint it black. Well, I'm not really planning on keeping this, so it's okay. It's okay. I don't need two Jasons in my life. So here we go. Kind of cleans up the edge. Uh, let me clean. I, I can't stand the broken edge, so we're just going to fix that. There we go. <laughs> it's a little bit uneven still, but that's all right. Okay. Still putting on some finishing touches. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. There we go. And let me show my original versus what I do now. You can see that there's differences, but pretty mm -hmm. much the same. And then let's get Justin's up here. Look at that. Look how cool that is. That turned out really nice. Oh, that's that's really nice. The fact that he's in the center and he's really framed and you can see it all um, in its fullness there. That's excellent. Good job, Justin. Snap oh, thank you. for Justin. Yeah, um, this isn't bad. I think I might I think I might do a couple more things like, you know, like the outline and stuff, just kind of make it a little better, maybe. Yeah. Or you know what? I'm I'm actually I think I might frame this or put it somewhere because you know, worst comes to worst, it might not be the best painting in the world, but you know, it's it's but a it's something that you made. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a representation of uh, you know a very a very good time spent with you. So. Uh, okay. Well, the bone says nice, and R two says it looks good. Mrs. R two oh, says you. good job. Jacob Ironside says great job. Exactly. Cheering you on. It turned out really good. And like I said, I like the aspect of the dream sequence idea. And not only that, give yourself, you know, you're going to walk away, clean things up, go to work, whatever. When you come back and look at your painting, it'll probably look even better than it does right now. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, because we're really close to home right now. We've been spending all this yeah. time on it. We're kind of tired. Then you're going to come back and look at it and say, wow, like you can see it in its fullness. You won't really notice all the nitty gritty details and things like that. So, um, it's always what's really cool about artwork. It's like kind of like coming back the next day or a couple of hours later and uh, seeing it all come to life. Please, I hope that you would uh, maybe uh, take a picture of it if you would and maybe like post it on Twitter and tag me in it if you if you feel so inclined. You don't have to if you don't want to because I understand that people want to be private about it. Of course, we are online right now and everybody got to see it. But <laughs> if you don't mind, that would be really cool. I'd love to show oh, people sure. what you did. And... Um, that's a good picture. Benjamin Joyner says, this has been an awesome show and the paintings look great. Maybe I can talk my daughter into rewatching this with me and we can paint it together. Absolutely. We really? go through the color. We go through the colors and the paints, or excuse me, the colors and the brushes that we use at the beginning. So you could absolutely do that. And as far as the stencil goes, guys, you can always find it online. That's what I did. And I just trace around the character and there you go. But um yeah. So anyway, I hope that you had fun, Justin. And um, I, I know I, I, I enjoyed it. You guys, if you don't know Justin, you can follow him on Twitter, the Justin proper, or his um, YouTube channel is in the description box below. And of course, you can follow me on different areas as well. Um, 
I tell people don't follow me on, on Twitter. I don't know why you would. I don't know why people do, but I mean, you can, if you want to. <laughs> no funny quips. Yeah, sure. 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 But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here, for supporting the channel. And uh, this was a lot of fun and I hope that everybody has a great rest of their weekend. Goodbye, everybody. Farewell. Thanks again, Justin, for being here.